Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. And we're up. What's up, champ? Pleasure to do this. Pleasure to have you in here, man. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. That was a phenomenal performance in Brazil against Glover Teixeira in his hometown. Last minute, like, I mean, how much time did you have to prep for that? Uh, I had about six weeks. Oh, you did have six weeks. Yeah, I had six weeks. But it was, well, pretty- la- but you knew that it was a three. It was supposed to be three rounds, and then they changed it to the title for five rounds, right? No, no. It was, so it they, was, they it was a title. Right oh, that was right after Ankalaev and right, Jan Bohovic. So right, right like from they there, they legitimately called me while they were still. Wow. Yeah, while they were still in the cage. If you wanted a full camp for a five round fight, though, what would you what would you prefer? Like, how much time do you really need? Uh, I prefer maybe about like eight weeks, eight to about eight to ten weeks. So slightly abbreviated, but your p- performance was phenomenal, man. I mean, it was it was amazing. To see you pick apart Glover like that and to do so well on the ground, too. I mean, that, that was a big victory. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people thought that I couldn't do it. I, could, I don't know. I couldn't. Well, that was just a general assumption was that I couldn't I couldn't grapple on the ground and things like that when that's definitely. But you getting that case. general assumption from who, though? People online? Just uh, picks. Like you know what I mean, just like people oh. like 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 an analyst. Then like any like the fighters or whatever that I talk to, or like they they be like, oh, like they always say it's always something that they say. Even guys in the division, you know, they were like, oh, he's just a boxer. You know, I don't know if he can really wrestle or if he can really has like kicks or anything like that. Yeah, they're questioning the kicks too, you know. So just, that's some of the biggest funny. moments in the fight. That left high yeah. kick of yours. Yeah. Well, Pretty people much. are gonna question you until they can't anymore. Right. That's how it goes, you know. There's always ah, right. oh, I don't know about this guy, and then all of a sudden he's the best ever. You you never know. Right, and that's why I'm that's why I'm just hungry for you know what I mean for names, man. I'm hungry for the next challenge. What did it feel like when they strapped that thing around your waist, man? This is it's a hard thing to describe. It was just like, like almost like unreal, like almost like living, like almost like like in a dream, like yeah. one of the dreams that I've had. You know, and it was just like, I don't know, it was just crazy. Just the weight of everything that I did and been through and everything was just, it was a lot. Yeah, it seemed like a lot. It's a lot for everybody. I mean, that's a moment that very few human beings will ever achieve. There, There's there's it right now. Yeah, that was, he, like, that's when he told me that he was about to retire. I mean, it's it was, amazing how long that dude has hung in there. He was yeah. the boogeyman for six years. You know, for six years, Glover lived in Brazil, and he couldn't get a visa. And this was, like, in the early days, like, when Chuck Liddell was the UFC light heavyweight champion. That's how far back Glover goes. Right. I heard something about, like, he went he went pro in 2001. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Right? Crazy. Yeah, that's wild. 22 years later. And then... Still fighting for a world still, championship. And, you know, having that fight with Yura Prohaska where he lost the title, I mean, that was a crazy close fight yeah. until he got caught in that choke. He was ahead. I think he was. Yeah, he was ahead yeah. in that fight. Yeah, Dude, I believe he was. That video that you made to Yuri was hilarious. We played it on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, man. You can't, you can't let it slide. That's what, said. That's what she said. <laughs> that was the first thing that came in my head whenever he said it. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> now... From, now I can't, like, bro, it's, it's, <laughs> he's, ruined the, he's ruined the phrase for me now because now I can't say it at all. No matter what, somebody can call me and be like, oh, I'm coming. Like, God, I'm damn. coming. <laughs> like, just. He's an odd duck. Yeah. That dude's an odd duck. He's strange. He's yeah. very, very different. Do you see, yeah. like, when he was fighting Glover and Glover was beating him up, he was like, good job, good job. Yeah, like tapping him on it. I yeah. thought it was like, well, you can't do that, man. It looks right. like you're tapping. It looks like you're tapping. Like, what are you doing? He's like, good job, good job. Mm. He's, but he's saying good job, and I, I think it was was it Mark Goddard who was the referee? I think it was Mark Goddard. Whoever it was was warning him. It's like, hey, don't fucking slap him and say good job. You can't do that. Just right. what a weird thing to do. Guys on top of you, rain and blows down. You're like, good job, good right. job. Like, yeah, bro. I don't, I don't know. For, only thing I can think would be. Possibly it could be like just like a, a tactic to try to make it seem like all like no matter what you're wasting your time, right? Type thing like yeah, you know, try to like get in their head because I think even like with the whole samurai thing, like he wants to play, he obviously wants to 
wants to this image to be believe, be believed of and yeah. things like that. But you know, I just seen him when I was at the PI a couple of days ago, and he's he's a nice dude. You know, he he walked up, he's like, "Nice to meet you," things like that. And then like I uh, came back the next day, I was going into PT, and he was working. He's like, he's like, I'm. I'm working on it. I mean, I'm working, trying to get back. I'm like, take your time, do your thing. I he's already had the time. shoulder surgery, right? Uh, I don't know. I would assume if he's already trying to rehab. Yeah, it. I'm sure he has, because apparently his shoulder was the worst shoulder they had ever seen. The UFC yeah. doctors had never seen a shoulder that fucked up before. Do you know what happened to him? No. His shoulder went out of socket in training camp, and they tried to put, put it back in. Oh, yeah. And these right. dudes are yanking on it. These just gym dudes yanking on it, and they fucked it up way worse. Yeah, that's never a good idea. Yeah, go know, to a man. fucking doctor, man. Right. You're, a, you're a world champion. World champion. And he had to give up his title like that. Well, it's interesting that he did decide to give up his title. He could have held on to yeah. it, and he could have had an interim title, and you could be fighting him for the undisputed title. But instead, he's like, nope, I'm going to give up my title. That's why it's like, he's an odd dude. Yeah, that's strange, because that's not only like a... Like I don't think that's not only like like not only like a bad move legacy wise. That's a bad business move. Yeah. Because now your next fight you fight as a challenger. Yeah. You, know, you don't get the you don't get the same pay per view buys. You don't you know what I mean you don't get the same amount of money or none of that. So. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, yeah. it, I could imagine the thought process behind it. Like you want to be right. noble, but uh, you gotta take care no, of your money, that. bro. You gotta take care of your money. I mean, how many right. world title fights you get? If you're lucky, if yeah. you everything goes perfect, and he should know now, especially being injured, like, hey, this could happen, and you could get a catastrophic injury, and you could be out for a year or so. You never know. I think it was a play of him trying to be noble. Mm. Just trying to be noble, trying to, like, you know, oh, he does the right thing, where he respects the warrior. And I like how like you're thinking about it, like, 3D chess. Like, what yeah. is this motherfucker doing for real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to tell you, man, I think a lot of what he does is meant to put a certain image in your head. Mm. You know, so. I'm sure. I mean, it makes sense. It would be smart to do. I mean, he's got a weird image. He's out there throwing kicks at trees. Right. You know, he's like, wraps a tree up in a foam pad and starts punching it and kicking it. like Yelling in the woods. Yeah. Like, okay, man. You know, gyms are better. Gyms right. are definitely better than a tree. I, I want to know what it is about being in the woods that just makes him want to yell. <laughs> like, what is it? Are you upset with the trees? <laughs> do you just feel alone? It's like something. Do you want to be heard? I mean, these There's are all a lot questions. Of things. You know, Do you want to be heard? Right, right. right. Yeah. I mean, do you, is it? Does it make you more, more uh, noble or sophisticated to be in the woods? I don't know. Man. What is it? Remember when Rocky was training for for Drago and Rocky Four went to the oh. woods, running in the snow, carrying logs and shit. I think, matter of fact, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, it makes me feel weird just even saying it out in the I'm coming video. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. I don't know another That's way to say it. That's what she said. Here it is. This is crazy. I think it, Where you at, though? This is the video. By the way, that's what she said. That's what she said! <laughs> <laughs> well, in the one that he did, though, it's like an act. In a in a uh, in a tree stump in the background. Yeah. Did you notice that? No, I didn't notice that. Yeah, bro. So I, I don't. Bro. It's probably out there chopping, chopping wood. Chopping wood. Yeah. I don't know. Look at him. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> it is fucking bro, weird. It's man. like. Oh wait. So I guess that wasn't an axe. Yeah. I might have been high when I said it. it Could have just been that post right there. Yeah, I don't see an axe. He's a strange cat, man. That's a strange cat. Bro, that was just like, yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm coming. Did you think he's next? Have they had any conversations with you about who who's going to be your first title defense uh, as the champion of the fucking world? Woo! Sounds good, Joe. Sounds good, sounds right? Real fucking good. And you earned the fuck out of that, too. Yeah, man. It was, uh, yeah, bro, Glover was, Glover was tough, man. Oh, he's so tough. Like, like y'all said that, right? I think we need to put a little bit more emphasis on it. Because, like, it's not just that he's tough. He's tough. He's tough. And while he's being tough, he's still fighting intelligently. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, for for 
not one second did I hit him with something and it was like, oh shit. I was like, oh, I don't want to get hit with whatever's next. Right. Cover up. Like, you know what I mean? Like that that mm-hmm. that one, like, oh, I need a, I need to find like protection type. Right. He never did that. Mm. You know, and that was just like crazy. Cause it was one sequence, like I think it was like in the third where I hit him with right hand, right hand, elbow, left hand. Mm-hmm. It's like at no point was he like, oh shit, I need to cover up. Right. Or anything. Cause like I mean, I finish you at that point. Right. But it's like, bro. That was in the ground and pound sequence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you're on top yeah. of him. That was so close. A lot of referees would have stopped it. A lot of referees yeah. would have stopped it there. I mean, you were dropping bombs on him, but yeah, he kept moving. Kept moving. He kept he trying to win. He, kicked, no me in the, he kicked me in the face. <laughs> From the bottom? Yeah, he grabbed my arm and pulled me like he's going to try to pull me in his guard. And then when I went in, as soon as I like, so obviously to not go in, you're going to sit up. I sat up. He kicked me in the face. Mm. Yeah, he's a crafty fella. Yeah, man. I think his time with uh, Alex Pajeda really improved him too towards the very end of his career when he started training with Alex because the, like there's something about like having that dude in camp with him and he's on the run for the middleweight title that it all like came together and you know some of his last fights were some of his best the Jan Bohovic fight mm. you know I mean uh, Yuri, the Yuri Prohaska fight like those was fucking great fights man. Yeah, he um he's harder to hit. He's harder to hit clean than I thought. Cause he turns his face a little, rolls with yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, a little, a little bit of that. But it's like it's his hands, right? So he definitely learns from from the people that he fights. Cause he was definitely doing a little John Jones to me. You know, the little like gonna kind of kind of poke kind of poke his hands out. And you watch it a couple times. Like I wanted to follow up with some shots with some combos, but the way he was like blocking, he's like going like this or like putting his elbow up like this mm. kind of like poking his fingers like jibbing his fingers like towards my like face so yeah that's yeah. a weird gray area right the, yeah. the you know because john poked a lot of people in the eyes yeah you know i'm sure he didn't mean to do it but that style of doing mm-hmm. it like that of having the hands out especially when you're as long as john it's a you know it's a very tri- it's it's a very gray area you're not supposed to do that yeah, no, you're not supposed to do it, but it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done quite a bit. You yeah. know, what I mean? especially like if whenever you see somebody get hit with something like mm-hmm. solid, and they start to like kind of get crowded, and they want to get some space, or they want to try to really keep you from coming for it. That's the first thing they do. Yeah. What could be done about that though? The eye pokes. The only thing that I think is a change of the gloves. They have to figure out something to make a better glove that doesn't encourage your hands to be open. You know, I mean, we've talked about this before, but Trevor Whitman, um, you know, uh, Gaethje's trainer, he's got a w- way better glove. He, he he makes his own material, Onyx. He, he makes his own gloves and shin pads, yeah. and they're fucking top notch. But he made a better glove, and I don't know why the UFC is not using it. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they have to get it approved by the commissions. I don't know what the deal is, but it's a far superior glove. Does it affect the grappling? Yeah, like no, no, it doesn't, but it, it, it keeps your hand curved. Like, the natural state of it is to have your hand in a curved position yeah. versus open. With the UFC gloves, you, know, you put those on, your hand wants to be open, and you have to kind of close it and mm. tighten it down. With with his gloves, it starts out in a folded position. Like, it's much easier. So even if you were, like, extending your hand, you would extend it like what you would if you had a tie glove, on, a boxing glove on. Right. You know? I just think there's got to be something. There's so many fucking eye pokes. I mean, you guys both poked each other in yeah. that fight accidentally. The only difference is when I poked him in the eye, it helped him. All right, because I because that knee that knee I caught him with right in the sternum right before that. If if I actually am able to put the frame on him like I want to, he's eating a head kick. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. so yeah, like saving well, me whenever I poke whenever he poked me in the eye though, I was on his ass. Uh-huh. I was on his ass. <laughs> I think I just landed like uppercut. Yeah, I just landed like an uppercut. I was right after the little weave, the little weave sequence. Here, that's smooth. How many was, times you watched it? Song. How many times you watched it? I watched it a few times. I watched <laughs> it a few times. It was this, uh, it was, yeah, it was this one little sequence in the beginning, at the beginning, at the well, towards the end of the the first round, where it was just, I remember it happening in the fight, but I wanted to see how it looked on camera, and it was, it was alright, pretty it was smooth. Right. It was alright. Oh, listen, it's a, it was a very good performance. It, it was very. You were very crafty. That was yeah. the the thing about the fight that I really enjoyed is like watching your setups and all your feints and luring them in and the way you're moving in and out. Like it was very, 
Because I had seen all that in other fights, but um, with all the stakes on the line in Brazil, fighting for the title, and I think you were at your best. I really do. Yeah, man. I, I rise to the occasion. I really lock in. Like, you know, I understand I understand the situation. I understand the moment, so that's why I work so hard to get to it. And then I trust the work that I put in, mm. you know, so – at that point, it's just, all right, do what you do every day. Everything, your pacing, you, you just were so smart about when to hit the gas, mm -hmm. you know, when to, when to, like, just, like, give them looks and, and catch your breath, and it was just phenomenal, man. Nothing surprised me. Like, um, nothing surprised me in that fight because everything, like, you know, he's been, that's the thing about being around for a long time, right? There's so much film on you, you know I mean? People, yeah. people watch your habits. Then, you know, after you've been fighting for so long, people can see when you stop evolving, mm -hmm. right? So they can see, like, all right, this is what he does, you know. And then that's where it comes in, like, all right, this is what we know he's going to do. This is what we're going to do in, uh, in place of this, you know. Then we get Anthony Smith in, and he's like, hey, oh, there's some things that he does that surprise me in our fight. I, I, I realize he did this, and these are some things I would have done differently. That you know, Like what kind of things did he do that Anthony. surprised Anthony? Um his grip, I think he said his grip, the way, uh, the way how strong he was, how hard it was to break his like, um, to break his grip. Wrist control. Yeah. So instead of, so instead of trying to fight his grip, fight like the, uh, fight like the underhooks and fight like the positioning. Mm. Right. So like uh, a couple times he got his hands clasped behind my up under my butt. If you notice, I didn't, I didn't fight his grip. I wasn't fighting his grip. I started fighting at his elbows. I started fighting at his shoulders. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, just other, other, other things away from where his strengths were. And then that um that trip, that trip that he got me down with in the fifth. Um, Smith had told me about that. So whenever he did it, so whenever he actually did it, he showed me about it, I was like, oh, it was slick. So I when I so I actually feel it and it was like, all right, yeah, it was slick, but it's like, all right, I know what to do. Bang, I lay in here. Stamps that's why I don't that's I don't panic. None of that. Just mm. chill and go through go through what I've been doing. Everything everything we worked on was was that. No, your takedown defense was amazing, too, because there was sometimes, especially in the first round, he got in pretty deep on you. You just shucked it all off. Yeah, I think that's why he kind of, kind of, well, he wasn't able to really fight and try to turn it into a scramble because I wasn't going to allow him. I wasn't going to allow him to turn it into a scramble for a takedown. So whenever he did shoot in, just met him with hard, with hard frames. Whenever I was hitting those hip, those hip pumps, those hip pumps were hard, you know, so immediately hip bump. Put a frame for him to fight through. You know, mm. if you're gonna get this takedown, it's gonna it's gonna mm. cost you a lot to get it. Right. You know, so that was pretty much the game plan. Make him do that and make him work. And then whenever we um, we're, while we at range, touch him up. Then you did that. Yeah. <laughs> when you woke up in the morning the next day, was it like, what the fuck? Did that really happen? You think I went to sleep, Joe? <laughs> you think I went to sleep, Joe? <laughs> No time for sleep. <laughs> and I dozed off for maybe like, like we were we were up for we were up to like maybe like eleven eleven thirty. I was like, we should probably take a nap or something, get some get some, get some sleep. I think like um, I went I went to my room, I laid down, I just like kind of laid there, you know. I didn't really sleep. Did I you lay there next there. to the belt? Yeah, <laughs> that's how they got that picture. That picture of me uh, laying with the belt. Eventually, uh, I mean, like I dozed off for maybe like an hour, hour and a half. Like maybe like it was like a couple hours. It was like a couple hours after after we had our everybody went to go lay down and everything. I dozed off for maybe like an hour, hour and a half after sitting up for a while. And uh, I woke up and like they were all like up on the roof, so we just kind of went up on the roof and a little bar up there and stuff. And just chill. hung out. Yeah, new world. Yeah, you're in a new world. Dating. Yeah, bro, it's it's crazy, you know. But it's I don't know. There it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was asleep. I eventually passed out, and then yeah, they got. What was your experience out. like in Brazil? Did you like it there? Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, beautiful, had a great right? Time. Yeah, it was beautiful. Nice fucking people. Nice people. Great weather. Beautiful sights. Great food. Great beautiful food. sights. Yeah. Beautiful All kinds sense. of sites, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> different makes kind you, of sites. Makes, makes you look at sites a little different. Yeah, you know? like, wow, no. there's some genetics down here. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> crazy. You know? 
beautiful. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. great people, man. It's it's yeah. a, a wild place to be too because when you think about you know Brazil and the UFC and jiu-jitsu, it's all from there. I mean, without Brazil, the UFC would not be what it is. I mean, yeah. who knows if it would have ever even happened or if it happened way, way later. And if it wasn't for Hori and Gracie, it wasn't for the Gracie family, it wasn't for Brazilian jiu-jitsu, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, no, nah, man. It's crazy. crazy. Crazy that one family can have such an impact on the martial arts world. Hey, that- it had an impact on me. Uh, Coiler Gracie, the guy in my in my corner, that's uh, Hoyce Gracie's nephew. Oh wow! So you know that's that's where I that's uh, that's who that's who our my our head instructor uh, under our under our great under our train under our jujitsu program. That's uh that's who we've been training under for. I think he, we joined under him maybe like about ten years ago. When did you? What was the first UFC that you saw? How old were you? The first UFC I saw was the Anderson Silva versus Forrest Griffin. I think I was like 19. Oh, I wow. was 18. I was 18. Yeah. That was a good one to see because Anderson was a wizard back Man, then. He was that, a wizard. That's what got me. That's what got me hooked. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what really, that's really what, what started the path towards, mm. towards all of this. Because, like, so I've been in a lot of fights growing up, right? So, like, I'm like, Growing up, I've been in a lot, I've been in different. I fought big, small, short, fast, all like all these dudes, right? And um, sitting there watching that and seeing what he did to him, it was like, okay, can I do that? <laughs> <laughs> and if I and right now, I well, I can't do that. I definitely don't want to run into somebody that can do that. Right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, I think I should probably become one of those guys that can do that. You know, when people talk about goats, you know, and I do think John Jones is a, a great argument for the greatest of all time, <clears throat> just based on his record. But I feel like there's moments in guys' careers, and those moments kind of get diluted when you see later performances that aren't as good, maybe when they're older. <clears throat> but when Anderson was in his prime, I, he was a magician. There was something about him, man. He he was like un, he had this unstoppable aura. He was so at peace and so calm, and he would smile at guys, and you knew he was fucking them up. Yeah. He was fucking everybody up, and it was it was the way he was doing it. He was doing it like it was magic. You know, when he knocked Impressive. out Forrest, it was like the, Forrest didn't have a chance in the world of hitting him. Yeah, and he was just waiting for the spot, but bink, moving backwards. Yeah, man, that was it was. <laughs> I never seen anything like it. Just a whoop, whoop, yeah, hit. bang, yeah. When he was on, when he was at his best, like the Vitor Belfort fight, during those times in his prime, man, he like when he first got into the UFC, when he lit up Chris Lieben, I was like, oh boy, everybody's fucked. Everybody in this division's fucked. And it was just one of those times where it was like you saw a guy who was like total next level who had just entered into the sport. And it changed everybody's idea of like what was possible with striking. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. He definitely, definitely did that for me. I um, I used to have this whenever I first started, like in my amateur, like early on amateur, like my first fights, my first, and I think I'm in my amateur debut back like, I think it was like March six, two thousand ten or something like that. So like I um. I used to watch. I used to have this Anderson Silva highlight video just mm. roll through like of, of all his fights and things. And I don't know, something about just watching that video made me feel like all right, like just watching greatness made me believe that I could be great. You yeah. Know? So I um, yeah. I used to watch it before every fight and I was just going in and <laughs> annihilating people. Yeah. Um actually my second my second amateur fight was against my god brother, right? Really? Yeah. So he um he actually had brought brought after I watched the Anderson Silva fight. He had a fight. He did like an MMA fight. Then like he came back. He got saw had the video. So you know, I seen him like oh, like you know, it's like it was like all right, it can actually be done. It's actually possible. Like it was actually a scene for it around here. And then that's when I ran. I uh, found my own gym. That's when I found my coaches. Like my coaches that are, that are uh, that are here with me. Um, and I started training with them. And I'd say like maybe like four months later, four and a half months later, four, yeah, about four months later, I ended up fighting him on like a week notice. 
Did you guys have a conversation? Yeah. Whenever they hit me up and asked me about it, I was like, all right, let me hit him up and I'm going to talk to him about it. And he was like, yeah, you know, he was like, it's just it's just a sport. It's, wild. it's, how, it's what we got into it. You know, it's part of the game. You know, um, of course, now I feel differently about it just for the simple fact of, like, we ain't really making no money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it was like. Nah, now it would have been a no. But I'm I'm just now getting into it. And I'm trying to get the experience like that. I'm trying to, you know what I mean? Right. Whatever. So we did, and I ended up winning in like, I, like I think it was like forty some seconds. And then I uh, ended up choking this guy out after that in like thirty seconds. Like so, I was so when I came out, I was I was just whooping people. Then uh, the, the my fourth amateur fight was a title fight, and it was a lot like the Glover Teixeira fight. Bro, I whooped this dude's ass, bro. Like, for rounds. Like, his like his lip was, like, almost inside out. His eye was, like, had, was like gashed above. His eye was completely closed. But he would not stop coming after me, bro. <laughs> he would not stop coming at me just, just – Steady, just like trying to hit me, and then like uh, I think I got tired. But they, um, but like I think like the first round, the first round I had him down, pinning a full mount, pounding him like pounding him out, and they stopped the round like a minute early. Whoa! Yeah, was he a hometown guy? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, so he was like, uh, like yeah, he was, trying to save him. And there was no commission. You got to think there's no uh, there was no commission yeah. back in Michigan back in the day. You know what I mean? So right. it was just like basically like guys just renting out venues, renting out a cage, and just yeah. putting on fights. And so like, yeah, bro, it was it was it was. Then the next round, I think I caught him with a head kick, and they stopped it a minute early again. You know, then I end up eventually getting tired. That's why like uh, amateur wise, like it was eventually it was just like oh, it's, just a, it's a no contest. But I actually got caught in a guillotine at the end of that. And, like after I got tired. Like, I think it's like, maybe, like, the fourth, fifth round or something like that. I got caught in a guillotine because uh, I just tried to shoot on him. I just tried to shoot. Like, I'm tired. Right? I'm going I'm to hold him down, catch my breath, and then, you know. But I didn't finish the takedown, you know. Like, it was it was not not my best work, Joe. Not my best work. And, uh, yeah, I got caught in a guillotine. Did you – you started your training with just MMA. Is that the first training yeah. you'd ever done? Well, have you done any we had, karate or anything when you were younger? When I was a kid, I did Taekwondo. I did like a little Taekwondo whenever I was a kid, but most of it was just like, like stuff my dad showed me, like you know what I mean, just about like how to how to how to, how to hold tight, how to roll with punches and things like that. And then uh, like my uncles, like my uncle showed me things. Like I was always into martial arts, you know. So um, my brother, the uh, that I uh, that passed away before I uh, before I before I went pro, he. He was into martial arts like I was, you know. So like you know, he would he would he would hear some things, and he was really smart, you know. So he would hear some things, he see some techniques, he show me, and we just kind of dialogue about things, you know. Then like you know, you had like movies like The Matrix and stuff like that. So like you obviously like obviously the stuff wasn't real, right? But like you, but even in even in like some of that like. They, they mimic certain real martial arts. Mm -hmm. You know, like Wing Chun is a real thing. Maybe not, like, the most effective thing, but parts of it are effective, mm -hmm. you know, and that's kind of, like, our thing. Like, all right, what parts of what martial arts are effective? So he was already, a, like, essentially kind of in playing with martial arts without even, like, really, like, knowing, mm. you know. So um, there's just an interest, though. Tony Ferguson uses Wing Chun. You see, he does a lot of Wing Chun dummies. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he practices with the dummy, but you see it in fights sometimes. Like he'll catch, he'll catch a wrist and use an elbow, or he'll yeah. catch a wrist and come with a punch. Yeah, it's yeah. It, there's something to it. There's some there's certain parts of every martial art that can yeah. be effective. As long as you, you know. combine them with the stuff that we know is right. effective. Yeah, right. There's just some that are more effective, like boxing, yeah. wrestling, kickboxing. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, um, but if you can have strong fundamentals in those, and then be able to sprinkle in some of the things like some people do that's what that's why you get the crazy spinning attacks from some dudes and things. like like yeah rodriguez is right fighting those this are weekend. just different yeah. those are just different techniques mm -hmm. you know those are just different um different arts and then he's just 
picking which one and out of which bag that he wants to go. Like spinning kicks and like T kicks, those are more like karate. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but they're more generalized now in M- MMA. Um, leg kicks, that's a Muay Thai thing. You know, um, calf kicks, and, yeah, Muay Thai. Uh, five, jab, a jab is really more boxing based. You know, um, but it's effective in all more more forms of fighting. So it's just like that. Like, yeah, you Did like, you? you know, so you started like hardcore training. You were eighteen, mm-hmm. around there. So that was like when you really just started learning everything. So right, you, learning everything together: wrestling, right. jujitsu, kickboxing, all of it together. Right. Yeah. I started out with jujitsu and and and, uh, and Muay Thai basically. And then, like, how long into it were you like? I think I could be a world champion. Oh, uh, see, that's the that's the thing about me being arrogant. When I got into it originally, I thought I could be a world champion, you know. But it's just like you never really know. But you, you, it's like you think about like when you were a kid and you can believe you could do anything. That's the type of belief that I have. You know what I mean? It's it, it's just never changed. You know, like um, I'm realistic. You know what I mean about things like all right, if I can't, but or how how much I want something and things like mm-hmm. that. But as far as like believing what I can do. I believe I can do anything, you know. So it's like um, whenever I stepped in, it was like, yeah, world champion. Because <clears throat> whenever I came in, although I watched Anderson Silver and I was in all of them, I wanted to know, can I whoop his ass? Hmm. So that's when my journey, when my MMA journey started, that's what that was. That was me chasing Anderson Silver to see if I can. I started fighting at 185. Really? When I was 18, I was fighting 185. Because you're not, like, you're, you're not real heavy for 205. What do you walk around at when you're training? <laughs> when I'm walking, when I walk around tra- when training, maybe like two thirty, two between two thirty, two thirty. That's not like some of those guys get big. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't get up to around like two forty, two forty five. That's around what I was whenever they called me for the Glover fight. You don't think you fight. could make one eighty five again? I probably could. Champ, champ for, for the right for the right fight. Champ, that would be a good fight. Or champ, 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 champ. champ. Oh, heavyweight too. Why not? Why not? You can't make welterweight. No fucking no, way. No, no. Hamza, Hamza, I don't know how the fuck he makes it. No. When you're around that dude, like, in between fights, you're like, what the fuck is going on? You ain't, there's not a world where you weigh 170 pounds. I don't think I've ever seen him in person. He's a big fellow. Big fellow. Yeah. He's big. He's it's thick. like Johnny Walker, though. I don't know how Johnny Walker makes 205. He's huge. He's huge. He's huge. Like, and, like, yeah. it was just, like, most dudes that are big, like, like, tall like that, they'd be, like, skinny. Where's he skinny at? Right, he's big. Yeah, he's just a big dude. Yeah, he looks like a heavyweight. When yeah. you dropped him, dude, that was one of the craziest knockouts. Yeah. It was like Timber. <laughs> was like, At first, I wasn't like, I don't know, man. It was just like, from from my from my point of view, like I slip, I slip, bang. I felt the I felt the clean connection, and then he um, but he he had swung too. So like you know, I kind of dip, I kind of dip back, and then when I look, when I look, all I see is his hands back. Now to me, I know right that's here. like a. Boom. Yeah, and when his hands go up, like I'm like, okay, that's like a, that's yeah. like a he's hurt type thing. That's why I just load it up to just follow up. You know, I'm not thinking like, oh, he's out right then and there. It's funny because I've heard people like not believe in your power, and I yeah. don't understand it. I've had con- conversations with people that are, oh, he doesn't hit that hard. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? You're right. watching people fly across the ring, and go unconscious. Like, right. how are you? How do you think he's not hitting hard? Like, what? It's weird when some people just decide that someone is not as good. Yeah. And, like, I'm seeing something. Mm-hmm. I'm watching you fight. And I'm like, this, this dude's clever. Like, this, this dude's dangerous. He, he catches chins. Like, you know how to catch chins. Yeah. You have, like, a sense of, like, where they're at, where they're going to go. And then you find them. I'm like, that's an that's a u- unusual talent. And I was, well, some people are like, oh, he doesn't hit that hard. He didn't di- hit Johnny that hard. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Watch yeah. that. What yeah, happened that was- there? That was as clean, that's about as clean as you can land a shot, especially to the temple. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I I understand. I understand fighting. You know, um, whenever I was sitting, learning and being taught things, I not only wanted to know how to do it, I wanted to know why, how, to, like, you know I mean, the 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 physics behind it. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, and in doing that, I, I understand the uh, fighting and angles and things like that on a on a different level. You know, um, it's like. How can I explain this? The three things that I know that I that I that I know that I, that I can do that are, what I see in constant in fights that most people 
don't do. I understand where I am in the fight as far as positional wise. All right, where, where do I stand? What's happening in the fight? What my options are, and what they're trying to do. You know, mm-hmm. and it's just like a, it's just almost like embedded into like my senses, to where my body reacts and it does the things like naturally. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like. That's why I like that that part in that part in the fight where I just flowed and just and just move and just like it's like did I see what he was throwing honestly no but, but you kind of knew where it was going but I understood based off of where his punches are what's next my body like it's just mm-hmm. it's bro, it's crazy especially when I'm locked in it's like one of the dopest feelings in the world that I wish like I could like plug like a wire from myself into other people so they could like just just see it maybe from my eyes or just how I'm feeling it or or whatever, but it's just like that's how I knew I was really good, you know. Um, I think it was before the Santos fight, we were in the back, or we were doing pad work, and I was just flowing, you know, and I was feeling good. And I'm hitting the pads, I'm like, all right. And I'm now sometimes whenever I hit pads, I like kind of put myself at a warrior, out of weird angle and just, just to try, try different things, you know, just laying here to get here to get to where I want to get here. And like it just hit me like there's nothing in a fight that I can't do. And there's nothing that I can't do in a fight at the highest level. And, like, it was like I've been working head down, working so long, just adding to my bag, adding to my bag. And I never really actually looked up and looked at what I had. And in that moment, that was one of the times that I actually did. And I realized, like, I'm ready to be the best in the world. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For real. That's awesome. I I felt that. that you, know? you know what's inspiring about that? There's some young kid that was just like you that's probably watching that fight. And watching what you did and like practicing it and fucking around in his living room and fucking around with his friends and is like, I think I can do this too. You know? Like your success will inspire someone the same way Anderson Silva inspired you. Yeah, man. That's Isn't that crazy, amazing? Man. Yeah, it is. That's amazing. And like having that ability to see those great fighters too is so huge for young up and coming guys. Because having someone who's just coming up who could see you or having, you know, those tapes, you could watch Fedor and watch Anderson and watch all the, the fighters that were in their primes. Like, you, you, you get this sense of what's possible. And then you go and try to incorporate that into your own game, and it just makes everybody better. Yeah, man. I was hungry for evolution. So, like, I had a period where, like, I just wanted to learn and just get be able to do, like, like just flow through flow, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, like, like I don't know if you ever been in a fight or been like in training. And you just flowing, mm-hmm. like you sparring, you just flowing, you just like feeling good. You're, You're doing not even all thinking. Things. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to add to that, like being able to do it in more positions and more, more steps, more, more angles. You know, I just wanted to do. So I was legitimately renting the the fights. I've rented a lot of fights from like I think it was family video they had a bunch of they had a bunch of UFC so like I'm I'm renting those uh, I'm pulling up YouTube uh YouTube boxing videos you know some kickboxing some rest so like any little things that I can try to learn it I can see like all right that was nice that was effective and then I can start to do it and then try to turn it flip it into my own you know and bro like that was one of the things that was hard coming up like like when people like oh you can't do this can't do this like bro my bag is deep like my bag is deep and it's just now it's i just get to show it now yeah you know what i mean now it's because now it's just about winning and and still the thing is about you like how old are you now 31 31 start training at 18 like you're still getting better like this oh, yeah. is this is not like you just honing your skills and keeping them tight. Like no, you're you're constantly improving. Yeah. And that's not a lot of time of training. You know, you mm. really become like elite at what you're doing, you know, with whatever the 10,000 hour rule is. You, you apply that like you're you're like still getting better. Yeah. And I still had ten, I still had years. I had years where I had to take off, you know what I mean, where I had to do other things and stuff like that. I mean, wrong. I always had periods when in those in those and they're still in those time a little bit where I did make it to the gym a few times. But like, yeah, for it hasn't been a whole solid thirteen years. And now you know, that you're the yeah. champ, like more resources are available to mm-hmm. you, more time, you know. And then 
also there's the confidence that comes from being a champ. Like most guys, when they become champ, then they hit another level. They hit another level once they're champ. Yeah, it just, just I did feel that a little something different, just in just in how the way it happened, like um, everything went went how how we thought it was gonna go. You know, I did think I was gonna have to deal deal with some adversity. He so he landed, he landed some shots, you know. But I'm good at rolling shots. We're good at rolling off with shots. You know, that's why sometimes you see I get hit and I don't give any space. That's because you, you may you may have touched me, but you didn't hit me. Right. You know what I mean. So it's like um, not a lot of guys that have the not have that have the skill and the understanding that I have are actually willing to just get in and fight too. You know, because at the end of the day, you 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 push it, you push it, you push that envelope enough to where it's like, all right, the 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 thing is now you have to fight this. I'm good with that, you know, and I have fun with that too. You know, it's just I don't know, man. I'm just built for this. Well, that's what it takes. If you want to be a world champion, you have to have that crazy belief in yourself, like you had in the very beginning. You got to put in that time, and you got to have that hunger and desire. You got it all. Yeah, that's man. a beautiful thing, man. Top it's of the fun, world, man. Jamal Hill. It's, man, that's a fun th- man. I, I just it's just fun being in there, man. I just have fun now being in there. Like yeah. it's just I I feel like I'm just locked into something just like different. I don't know. Like whenever for anybody like, you know, man, listening or whatever, just like it's like for me, it's like whenever you doing something like you're really good at, like maybe you ever seen like like back in I was about to say back in high school, but we, we, might, we might have had I'm different experiences. I'm old as fuck. I was about to say, we might have had different experiences <laughs> in high school. Well, I was in high but school, no, like, rode horses. <laughs> like, uh, like typing. Have you ever seen like like somebody that can type like, mm-hmm. like yeah, straight sure. up like this? Yeah. I can't type like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. But So, but there was a time where I did take typing class where I did kind of get it so like, I can understand like, it's like when you're really good at something. When you're really mm-hmm. good at something and you're just doing it and it just comes natural to you, maybe not a lot of other people can do it. Like, that's how I feel whenever I'm fighting. Mm. I don't feel like anybody else can really do what I do. Well, that's a big part of being a great champion. You you have to have that belief that you are the one. You know, and it's not an easy road. It's a the, the craziest lifestyle choice, like, as a professional person. Like, decide I'm going to be a professional fighter. And a professional fighter in mixed martial arts, it's a, it's one of the craziest choices you can make in life. But if you can pull it off, and if you can get to that world championship level, and they strap that, how much does that thing weigh? It's got, it got some weight. It's got yeah. some weight to it. That's why I mean. they put that thing around you. Like, ooh. ooh, yeah. Um, when you look back at fights like that that you had in the octagon and you learned from, does any fight like where you like made a big leap? Does any fight like stand out for you? Um, like what about the Paul Craig fight? Yeah, well, the Paul Craig fight. Honestly, the, the thing that came from that is realization that you're not better than the, you're not better than the game. You're not invincible. Respect, you know what I mean. Respect the craft and respect what you're doing, because that's what that was in that fight. It was I don't. It was basically I don't care what you do, regardless. And I'm not worried about nothing. All I got to do is show up and I win. Mm. That's really how I felt. I felt like all I had to do was show up and I was gonna win, and. I paid for that, you know. Um, I went. I like he didn't. He didn't pull me down. I went down with him willingly, you know, with him already having my arm locked and everything like that. And then I'm like, all right, watch this. Start working the legs. Start. But that was the one way he had to win. Yeah. And I gave it to him. And he's he's so dangerous off his back too. It's such yeah, a different level off his back. But I, I understand that. But that's the thing, though. I didn't care. I didn't right. respect that right. at all. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what that was what the lesson was for me to learn there. Take from that respect the game. Give every treat everybody like they're the absolute best in the world at what they do at everything. He's a good guy to learn from too because his level on the ground is above and beyond most yeah. people's. Above and beyond. Yeah. His level off his back. I mean, he tapped Ankalaev with like one second to go. Yeah. I mean, he's something special off his back. If you that guy is one of the best grapplers at 205 in the world. He's mm-hmm. so fucking good. 
Like I think Paul Craig could he I think if he dedicated himself, he could be a world champion at legit like straight grappling. Oh yeah, a thousand. A He's thousand that percent. good. He's that good. When he locks cr- triangles on people, you're like, oh shit. Yeah, it's when, a triangle. I mean, when he locked dangerous. onto my arm. He was strong as shit. Yeah, his like, grappling. He grabs just like desperately. Like it's almost like mm-hmm. complete desperate. Like you about to grab like how you would grab a rope when you about to fall off a cliff or yeah, some shit. Yeah. <laughs> he grabbed my arm. <laughs> like like you don't want to die. That's how he grabbed my arm. Yeah. And then whenever I whenever I like literally whenever I base and I try to pull my arm, if you my arm didn't move at all. Mm. Like there was no wiggle. You know how yeah. you just want to do it. You yeah. kind of shit. None of that. There was no movement whatsoever. Yeah, well, some guys, when they get to the ground, they don't want to go 100% because they don't want to burn themselves out. But Paul Craig, like, he could close it off. He's so confident in his ability to close it off. He just cinches everything down. Yeah, right away. Yeah. Yeah, I was, and that kind of that kind of took me by surprise. I thought he was going to be more like of a technical, like, oh, this the next step, this step, this step, whoa, this and that, try to set up. Bro, he was strong, and then he was still doing those things, so... Did you leave good. that fight thinking, "Fuck, I got to learn how to do that off my back"? No, not at all. No, because I, I feel, I, I didn't feel like, oh, I, oh, my ground game was shit or anything like that. I just felt like I fucked up by going doing things on his terms. I let mm. him dictate yeah. the fight. I could have, could I beat Paul Craig on the ground even then, even then? I yes, I could have, if we had done thing, fought the fight on my terms. You know, I'm fighting him now. I make him sprawl desperately. Now, bang, I make it hard on him. Bang, land some shots on him. Right. You know, um, and control from there. You know, not letting him lock onto my arm and then go down to the ground with him. Because when we hit the ground, it didn't, it was, there was like, for him to pull me to the ground, for you to pull somebody to the ground, you don't know how this person is going to land, right? Right. I mean, he doesn't know how he's going to land. And there creates, there's a certain space that's created with that. Because I willingly went down with him, that was not the case. I fell down into position just like he did, and he was able to lock even tighter mm. on my arm. Yeah, you know, just like little thing, like little things like that, like little small things that I don't think anybody else really thinks about. You know, that are huge, and I notice them and I adjust them. That's why it was like it seemed like it's like leaps and bounds, but really it's just a small adjustment, small realization, small adjustment. Don't do this, bang. Yeah, did when when that happened in that that fight, like. We were worried about your arm. Mm-hmm. Like your arm got fucked up. How bad was it? I was, it was dislocated. It was a clean dislocation. No torn tendons. No broken bone. Nothing. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it was basically best case. Best, best case, case scenario. scenario for sure. Because best case scenario. You, you did you ever watch um um uh, when uh, Frank Mir uh, broke Tim uh, Sylvia's Tim Sylvia's yeah, arm? Saw, oh yeah. Snapped it at the forearm. Yeah, like oh yeah. shit. Yeah, like, that that's nasty. worst case scenario. I thought it was broken whenever I was in the case. So that's why I'm not like everybody in the world. Like, like, I thought it was broken. Whenever I sat back, it was almost like a line you could see, like, you know what I mean, where it was, looked like a, just like a break across, you know. Um, but I guess not. That was just the iron. That was my, <laughs> my elbow and the bone just hanging out on the other side. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So it was. And then, like, I was like, like, yeah, I was good. I went and stood up and everything. And I heard you got on my coach saying that y'all they, they needed to get me up out of here. All right, that was that was. What did, what did I say? You, my coach. He's like, oh, you need to, y'all need to get him to F out. Well, I thought it was and broken. Thought, well, yeah, you gotta yeah, get him to the hospital. Look, I got it. So I had, I had to get, I had to pay his respects for for everything for now me going. And standing up for the decision, that was me paying my respect back to the game. And then for you know just. I had to do it. It was just mm-hmm. something that I that I that I owe that I owe to the game to do. Yeah. So, you know, and they they did they did want it they did want to immediately like but nah I'm like nah I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna stand oh, right no. you know something I had to do you know I had to I had to feel that I had to go through that you know and uh, that's kind of like what that was even me sitting on the ground like all right that was me that was me realizing me accepting accountability that was me taking accountability there it is right there yeah it doesn't you know. Broken. That's that's a, a strong perspective that you have that you just accepted that you you took yeah. that loss like a champion, you know that's one of the hardest things to do is to take a loss with grace, take a loss with dignity, yeah. you know and 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 know that this is part of the learning process. You win or you learn, and sometimes mm-hmm. you learn when you win, and sometimes you lose, and it's a big lesson. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly, and that's exactly how I approach it. I agree a thousand percent, and uh, from that I just took that and just learned from it. It's funny how you see, like, MMA math just doesn't work. 
Right. It just doesn't work because, right. like, you you see Johnny Walker fights Paul Craig and takes him out early. Jimmy Jimmy Crute beat Paul Craig, beat Paul Craig, and then we went and had we went and had our fight. That was the main thing of why I was like I was like uh, I was happy about getting the crew fight because he had beat Paul Craig. Mm. So it was like all right, it feels comfortable anyways, getting into the ground. You know, and things like that. And I really, I really wanted to go in and dominate, and dominate in that fight. But I wanted to do it under my terms. I wasn't just gonna go in and let him just grapple me. Right. We were gonna hit the ground. We we're gonna hit the ground under my terms. And um, you know what happened? What happened happened. And then, yeah, the Johnny Walker thing. But the thing was, um, and you know, Paul, Paul, Paul's solid, bro. You know what I mean? Anytime, anytime, me and Paul any in the same place, he got he got drinking a dinner on me I always. <laughs> you know, um. But uh, the Vulcan fight, Vulcan Uzumir fight, uh, exposed a lot. You know, it exposed a lot, um, and it exposed that 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 my man's got to he got to learn how to his wrestling, getting you to the ground, and then trusting his stand up. And I honestly, I think Paul Craig has good, pretty good stand up. If whenever he if he's confident and he actually trusts it, it's just something whenever he gets in there, he just don't trust or believe in it. You're gonna take some hits. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you, he don't he don't he has gotta trust in the technique while while still, you know what I mean, understanding that. I think he comes from being a specialist too sometimes because he's a yeah. specialist on the ground. Yeah. And so his stand up just doesn't really feel like his thing, whereas you you're an overall guy. Right. You, you know, your striking is your strong suit, but you you, you do everything. You don't have, I mean, your stand up also, every fight starts standing up, which right. is just a big advantage for the striker. Right. Yeah, Especially if you got good takedown defense. You know, like for yeah. a grappler, there's this, this thing where you've got to get this fight to the ground. And you're standing with a guy and he just keeps chopping away at your legs and hitting you and chopping away. And every day, and your power bar keeps going down. Mm-hmm. And you're like, ugh. Yeah, I feel, but that's but that's the thing. Just because of the sheer size of Johnny Walker, I figured that'd be a hard, that would be a hard. Thing for, hard matchup for for Paul because mm. I know Paul wants to get it to the ground, right? And I know Johnny has explosive, nasty power. I mean, look what he did to my arm just for me catching a kick. Yeah, he did that. That wasn't him throwing a kick and me blocking it. That wasn't him throwing a kick. And I just, I was like, I just like caught it, like just barely, just barely tapped it, and my arm swelled up. You know what I mean? Like, dude's got some power. He's got crazy power. Dude's got some crazy power. And when I, he knocked out Khalil Roundtree, I was like, Jesus. Yeah, that that short elbow. elbow. Yeah, that, hey, that was <laughs> that was the one fight that I was worried about. If you actually look, whenever we uh, whenever he, whenever I first hit him and I hit him with those shots and he tried to he grab me, try to push me against the cage all the way across, you see immediately where my hands went. <laughs> <laughs> right to the bicep. My hands went immediately to the bicep. Yeah. No, nah, we're not. not we're today. not doing. Yeah, we're not doing this. No, it's he's, dangerous. He's knocked a. He's knocked a few people out with that. I believe. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's like one of his. That's one of the things he's nice with. Just bow yeah. a little short. No, he's elbow. so dangerous. That was yeah, that was bro. crazy too. That was. Just, I mean, ugh. look how he does it so tight. Bow. Boom. I mean, he's amazing. Good. He uses. He's using leverage. He's yeah. using the leverage of his height. So he's coming down. He's he's just heavy and he's tall and. He just drops his weight. When he did that celebration, though, and dropped down and did the worm, blew his shoulder out, I was like, <laughs> what happened? Like, oh. I remember I was interviewing him. I'm like, is your shoulder okay? Yeah. He's like, no, no, it's not. Adrenaline was still pumping yeah. through him, so he didn't know how bad it was. Crazy that he did that on a celebration. Right. Destroyed his shoulder. Giant-ass scar on his shoulder now. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much that affects him still, if yeah. whether or not he's okay. You know, because fighters... They'll have like a thing where there's forever their that arm's compromised and they're still fighting and they're still winning, but yeah. they don't have full power in that arm anymore. Yeah, my, it took a while for me to uh for for my arm for my arm to be all right. Yeah, right there. Like fully, fully all right. Crazy how that did it. That that falling down and doing the worm did it. Like right there. Oh, cause I slapped. Yeah. He slapped the. Right there, he slapped. He blew yeah. his fucking left shoulder out, and now he's got a. a yeah, right there. Pop. And now he's got a giant fucking scar on his left shoulder. He's being goofy. Yeah, people have hurt themselves doing some stupid shit. Who was Didn't Terrence... <laughs> Terrence hurt himself doing, uh, celebrating... Did he? His debut... His debut when he uh when he knocked when he knocked out uh when he knocked out uh Favola. 
Did he hurt himself? Bro, he jumped on the cage and hurt his knee. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. That's right. He blew his knee out. Hey, we got to We got to We should. I think we got. We, yeah, we might have to do. Uh, a, we might have to do a list of. We might have to do. Yeah, <laughs> we might have to so do crazy. a list of that. Who uh, uh injuries during celebrations? Yeah, look at that. He's like, ah, I hurt my knee. That is so crazy that he did that. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, Terrence McKinney's a dangerous dude too. Yeah. That's a guy who goes all out quick. He yeah, comes bro. at you. That guy comes at you. Yeah, he's just got to work a little, a little, a little more finesse because that flying knee, the mm -hmm. flying knee that he gets caught with, it's just like a, it's like a product of just of his instinct being just to wrestle. Mm. You know what I mean? So right. whenever whenever they charge, they make a fast one. They charge towards him, and it kind of gets his head away. He doesn't see. First thing he thinks, like, all right, he feels the momentum coming in. Like Duck Ben Askren and Masvidal. Yeah, yeah, like that. That instinct's hard to shake. It is. Yeah. It is. It's just that, gotta the instinct of a specialist. Footwork. Yeah. Footwork. When you look at, like, the, the landscape and the light heavyweight division, like, what fights are intriguing for you right now? Like, <sighs> intriguing in what way, right? Intriguing, like, uh, this, like, this is wanna... the guy I want to get in there with. I uh, well that in that way like pretty much every pretty much everybody at the top present different challenges you know mm -hmm. everybody's their own different challenge like uh, I think Belhovich would be a good uh, good striking and mix up challenge uh, Magomed's a good uh, he's a good he's a good mix up challenge but I think he's gonna come more of a heavier wrestling type um, type thing Yuri's a striking challenge so that'd be fun a, a flowing striking challenge mm -hmm. at that because he just flows you yeah know, and I'm good I'm good with flowing I like to be creative and do things and flow he's too. so herky jerky it's a very unusual way he moves yeah. he's like everything's like his hands are down he's switching stances yeah, he's it's like doing that but i understand that though mm -hmm. i understand that movement i understand that that type of that type of fighting you know just trying to be loose to be fast mm -hmm. to be fast be it's like water be the be water the yeah. whole thing like be water is just trying to flow and crash you know just be loose 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 and then bang crash yeah. and hit you know that's that's essentially the same thing that i'm doing you know, um, it's just I'm a little more technical. You know, I try to stay a little more tight, and I try to uh, I try to keep more options open for myself. Mm. You know I mean, if that makes sense. So, has the UFC given you some sort of a timeline on when your first defense would be? Mm, no, there's I think it's kind of hard for them to do that at the time, right? Right. It's because Yuri's hurt. Magomed and Jan fought to a draw, so they don't feel like they. I mean, they don't really see them giving the title shot to one over the other. Um, Rackage is still hurt, I believe. Uh, you got you got Smith who uh, who hurt his leg and but technically uh, can't. But he lost. was supposed to be a backup though. Yeah, with you and Glover, right? Yeah. But then he missed weight. Yeah. Which is the I mean, as a backup man, I don't want to make weight. You know, like yeah, making I mean, weight I for he's a big get fella. Paid. He's a big dude. Yeah, he's a big like, boy. For him to make two oh five is probably quite a struggle. Uh, he probably should have gave him more time too. Yeah. You know, as soon as like some of you like, oh you, this is the fight and then you know, you got him you should back up fighter then. I don't think he knew until like a couple weeks later. Oh and so he didn't have as much time. Yeah. Know. That's not good. Yeah. So um so do you think it'll probably be Yuri if Yuri recovers in time? Yeah. If Yuri recovers in time. Maybe July. Yeah. yeah. That's what I want. International Fight Week. Yeah, that's the you big know, one. You know what I mean? Me, me and Yuri, you know, Con yeah. Con Connor and Chandler. Yeah. I think Connor nice. and Chandler has to happen later than that, though. Really? Yeah, because um, Connor has to enter the USADA training, the, the, the testing pool. So I think that's six months. I think you, you have to be in that testing pool for six months before you could fight. So we're, we're in February. So I don't think July would work. You know, I think I think it's going to take a little bit more time than that, if I'm guessing. I think they have to fight in, like, September or something. So yeah. here we are in February, so, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. September, seven months. I think I think he has to be in the testing pool for six months. Wait, well, no, if you got to be the, you got to be, is this six? It's either I, six I or 12. It's, it was either six or more. If it's more than six, that's crazy, because they're hosting the Ultimate Fighter together. It makes sense that they would try to set something up, a big fight for September or October or maybe even right, November, November, Madison yeah, Square Garden. Square, yeah. yeah, that's a big one. It might be that one. 
which makes sense. Well, that's why it makes sense to get Sweet Dreams in there for International Fight Week so yes. I can be ready for Madison Square Garden. The question is whether or not Yuri can recover from catastrophic shoulder injuries. Like, that's a yeah. catastrophic injury. Like, he had major so- shoulder surgery. And uh, I don't know exactly the extent of the injury, but I know that the UFC doctor said it was the worst shoulder injury he had ever seen, which is a lot. I mean, that dude's seen a lot of shit. Yeah. So if he says that, that's a big, We're pretty bad. It's a big fucking deal. So, you know, what? shoulders are very tricky. It's such a weird joint. It moves mm-hmm. in so many different ways that an injury can, you know, you got to really rehabilitate that correctly, and it takes a long time. Yeah, I was coming off a, uh, I was coming, I think I had a partial tear in my labrum or. Uh, after the Santos fight, the second round he actually dumped me. He actually when he got that takedown, he kicked me on the body. He got that takedown, he dumped me. He actually dumped me on my shoulder. Mm. So he actually he did some he did a little bit of damage. So I gotta understand how 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 much it actually takes for a shoulder to like fully fully heal. Did he, you have um, to get shul- uh, shoulder? No, I didn't surgery? have to get surgery. I didn't have to get surgery or anything done on it. But it took a while for it to for it to heal. Just rehabilitation, right? Did you do stem cells? No, I just did physical therapy. If you ever get in that situation again, get a hold of me. All right. So we'll connect you to some stem cell places. Yeah, you know, for a lot, sure. A lot of guys are going. Um, uh, Camaro just went down to Columbia. A lot of guys are going to do that uh, bioaccelerator place down in Columbia and getting stem cells. It, it'll really help your recovery, like especially for injuries. It cuts the time down yeah. I was just talking to some. I think somebody just came up to me and, and offered me. They said they got a place down somewhere down south. Um, we have a place we like work with in Austin. Yeah. We have yeah. a place place we work with in Austin that helps a, a lot of yeah. a lot of guys come into Austin and get stem cells here, and that's that's gr- a great option too if you want to stay in the states too. But they can do stuff in other countries that they can't do in the United States. In Colombia and in, um, there's a great place uh, the CPI in Tijuana. Uh, there's a great place in Panama that Dr. Neil Reardon runs, and the, the the laws there are different. The laws in the United States, for whatever reason, you can make all sorts of reasons for why they, they can't do it. None of them are good, but <laughs> they, they, they have a lockdown on what you're allowed to do here in the United States, even though it's highly effective, and even though you're dealing with injured people that really should have every option every available option, to them, right. especially when some of these options have proved, proven to be effective. Yeah, 100%. I, um, I'm, I'm just now learning like all the things that are proper things and things like that to take care of my body. That's another well, that's a, one of the unfortunate things about coming in late and learning things late yeah and so um yeah that's definitely one of the things i'm probably uh i end up end up into you know because it's just part of the job you just, you're gonna get banged up you're gonna have you're gonna have things happen to you and uh yeah you're in the destroying bodies business right you know? right, right. <laughs> but yeah though uh on the main thing though like yuri yuri ideally would be the fight that i would want yeah just because I think that's that's the uh, that's the that's the better sell and that's the fight that I think a lot more people want to see. Um, I don't think people are really big on watching Magomed fight right now. Um, he's good. He's a good fighter. He's a he's a great fighter. The problem with a, f- a fight like that, it's a fight like that, is like puts a bad taste in people's mouth, and yeah. it's not his fault. It's just the way they right. match up, and then the the you know the the decision, the fact that it was a draw. Mm-hmm. Which I watched it again. I still don't think it was a draw. You know, it was very close. Who did you have winning? I had uh, Uncle Live winning because I thought Uncle Live won the first round, although it's very close. I but, thought he did too. Yeah, but then um, you got to give credit to Bohovic for those kicks because mm. he had fucked that leg up. Bad. Both of them. And it's he just goes shin to shin with dudes. Yeah. He just goes, boom, let's try it out. Let's go shin to shin. Let's see how you feel. And next thing you know, your yeah. legs don't work like they used to Bro, before. That dude's dense. <laughs> I mean, you see the power that guy carries? He must be dense as fuck. I bet his bones are just like fucking wood. You know, he's just dense. Mm-hmm. And when he goes crack, shin to shin with guys, like that's crazy confidence. Yeah. Of just k- kicking another dude in the shins. You know, there's a dude named Malapet. Uh, I think it's a technique to how he does it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. He knows the, he the spot it. on his spot shin. Then, yeah. yeah. But it's just very impressive that he does that. And, you know, he, he just so good at Muay Thai and so good in in that fight at doing that but then the wrestling he got he got taken down by the wrestling yeah but that's a great adjustment by Magomed I mean he's he's a real world class fighter is. yeah he is I think he's yeah, I think he's legit all oh, those guys you know, from just... Dagestan that is a hard spot in the world yeah, man. man there's some fucking killers coming out of that spot I, just, I, just, I mean they hungry 
I mean, yeah, they're hungry. They got a lot to fight for. They got a lot to fight for, and a lot of those guys, I think, they have this advantage in that they're very religious. So yeah. w- with uh, their Islamic religion, they don't drink, they don't party, no girls, no nothing, just food and training and fights, and that focus. I know Jamal's like, what? <laughs> Where would I be? <laughs> Where would I be? Yeah. <laughs> if only, if only. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta enjoy yourself a little bit. I think so too. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the greats enjoyed themselves. I mean, hey, I did all that shit. Yeah. I, <laughs> look, look at me now. <laughs> look at me now. <laughs> Bang, headshot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at me now. Shout out to Leon. Yeah, bro. shout out to Leon. That's a great fight, huh? The rematch. Yeah. Ooh, that's intriguing. Let's see, Leon, bro. Leon is dangerous for the same reasons. I like. I feel like. That make me great. Um, he knows what to do, when to do it. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, he's he's like some of the things he does, the way he times it, and it's like on point. It's like an instinct. He's good, bro. Oh, he's, he's good. really he's really good. He's bro. so good. He's one of the most impressive guys I've ever seen hitting pads. You see, Leon hit pads. Yeah. But what pull up a video of Leon working the pads. His technique is so sharp. So sharp in the the fluidity of his mm-hmm. combinations. You're like that's a, a world a class striker. Yeah. And that setup that he did with Kamaro, he shows him the hand and then lands that left yeah. high kick. Ooh. The kick was textbook, bro. Textbook. 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 Textbook perfect. I mean, you, you watch him with his his movement and his his pad work. Let's see, that's just understanding where to mm-hmm. be. He's just that little palm right there. Mm-hmm. That's just understand checking the checking rotation. Like bro, yep. he's just checking, understanding where to be. He's one of the oh. most smooth guys that's ever fought in the UFC in terms of like yeah. combinations and striking and just everything he does is perfect. His his technique on in his stand up is just perfect. And yeah. then the fact Even that on he the took Kamaru down, took him down Even the first round, got full mount. Took Crazy. his back. So Crazy. He was on his back for what? Yeah. For like about two minutes? Yeah, dominated that round on the ground. Yeah. Like, who the fuck saw that coming? That was nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. And now, also, he's felt Kamaro. He's felt that wrestling, felt that power, and, you know, had a situation where he was down in that fight and realized that he had won the first round. So his adjustments would have to be made. And then Kamaro, knowing that he had the fight won, if mm-hmm. he just avoided that kick, he had the fight won. He was yeah. ahead on the cards. And that's the thing, though, right? That's going to give Leon a weapon to actually have to threaten because mm-hmm. he's going to have to respect that kick. Yeah. So that's gonna that's already a change in the fight. Yep. And he's going to have to respect everything else, too, because yep. Leon, it's not he's just got a hands. kick. He's got hands. He's got, got knees. Hands. He's got elbows. He's got everything. Mm-hmm. He's got a, And he's got the fluidity of his combinations. It's just it's the best in, in the division. Yeah, he's sharp, man. Very. And then, but you got Kamaro, who's a fucking nightmare, man. Yeah. Kamaro, especially coming up, that's one of the things that I remember, and I, I, I talked about it frequently. I was like, no one is calling that guy's name. No one. Man. Everybody's talking about, I want to fight this guy. I want to fight. No one said. And then Kamaro Usman, if you're looking for a fight, no, 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 no. <laughs> there was none of that. There was hey, uh, none of that. He knew. So this is how like like you got to understand this about Kamara. this is this is this is how good he he testament to how good he is right for he won the first leon won the first round and for the next better of three rounds you knew exactly what he was about to do to you yep. and you couldn't stop it couldn't stop it you know what i'm saying yeah yeah that was like it took a perfect setup at the end to, to, to bring it home mm-hmm. because we all knew he was just going to push him up into the cage and just punch on him. And the crazy him, thing about shots, Kamaru, like, and on him. Kamaru has destroyed knees. His knees are fucked up, man. Yeah, I see him. I see how he moves a little bit. It's kind of like it's not his angles aren't really sharp on the turn. Well, he can't move good. It's like he's in constant pain. He fights in pain. That's like his so knees are so fucked up that he walks downstairs backwards. Damn. Yeah. That fucked up and a world champion. That he was so mm-hmm. fucked up that he told me that he, he had to walk on the grass. Like he was next to the sidewalk. The sidewalk hurt too much. So he'd walk on the grass. That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ten still to go in and compete at that level. Train yeah. how you train. If you look at the difference between yeah. the musculature in his legs and the musculature in his upper body, it's a drastic difference. Yeah. I think difference. a lot of that is because of the destroyed knees. Well, if you look at the way he grapples a lot of his wrestling, he's, his wrestling is done with upper body. Mm-hmm. He doesn't wrestle with He doesn't grapple with his legs. Yeah. It's amazing that some, and he throws a lot of kicks. It's amazing that a guy who's hurt like that can Those compete. L- low kicks. Mm-hmm. Low, low kicks, low yeah. Kicks. He'll throw a high kick occasionally, you yeah. know? Like, I think he threw some high kicks in the Colby Covington fight. I mean, he's just, he's fucking dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah. Just, his mind is the thing that is most dangerous about him because to have the ability to overcome that kind of pain, like, he's in, his cartilage is fucked. Yeah. So he's, like, everywhere he walks, every step, constant pain. Everything constant pain. Just he just with believes it. he's the guy. Yeah, you know? he just, just deals believes with he it. believes he's the guy. He believes he's just better, and he just I think I believe he marches forward with that belief, mm-hmm. and that's how he um, that's how he's been getting 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 through that and everything. Plus, adrenaline is yeah. Like uh, you, you done an MMA fight? Before? No, kickbox. Yeah. Though. Kickbox. So yeah. you know the adrenaline yeah. whenever you like, especially in the MMA fight, dog. That adrenaline is nuts. Like I um like even the Paul Craig like my um my um my farm like I didn't feel it like that but the minute you get back there to the back <laughs> and that adrenaline's gone, <sighs> yeah, tough the, times. Yeah, you see guys walking out of there, they're walking out of the locker room. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, oh, yeah, oh, limping. All of a sudden, yeah. next thing you know, he's walking, he's walking, he's walking fine. He's all hype and everything like that and everything. You know, he's the crazy thing is the calves. The calf yeah. kick has changed everything. Yeah. It re- it's it's so wild that this one kick that was always available, always, all of a sudden over the last <laughs> few years has become like a primary weapon. Nasty. That's like all... Adesanya in Pajera, he said mm-hmm. that he fucked up his leg in that first round. Like Israel said, part of the problem was I couldn't move. Yeah. I, he got my leg. Even though Israel looked like he was fine, it's just because he's a champion. Because he mm-hmm. knows how to hide it. And he knows how to keep moving, but it's like that leg was just compromised. From too many those chopping low kicks, he just chop, chop, yeah. chop. I, OSP got me with the leg with them, with them, and uh, whenever we, whenever we fought, and then the fight, they didn't feel like you know what I mean. They didn't really feel like any, after the fight. Oh my god, you know maybe like the last one, maybe one of the last ones. It was like a stinging, like more like a little stinging feeling. But um, yeah, but that's the thing. Once you see something's working, yeah. People are gonna start taking it. People are gonna use a lot. Like I like that's what that's what made me realize like all the other people that study study the fights and study things like I do, because people start to implement those mm-hmm. things. They'll start to implement it more and more and more and more. Like people are gonna eventually people are gonna start implementing the jab more and more and more and yep. more. You know. I'm wondering how many people did, you saw the Khalil Roundtree fight where he sidekicked that dude in the really? knee and blew his knee out. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. One. That one scares me. I'm not a fan of that one. I'm not a fan of that one either. It's like I get it. It's it's there. It should be used because it is a it is a real technique. Well, if that's the case. Then why can't we just punch in the back of the head? Then I think you should be able to. <laughs> I really do. It yeah. doesn't make any sense to me that you can't hit in the back of the head. Because, well, they well they treat that because it's a weak spot, right? Yeah. It's almost like being hit in the nuts. You know. Yeah, but I mean. I to mean, a certain degree. Isn't almost... your whole fucking head a vulnerable spot? I, mean, I guess Facts. there's maybe a vulnerable spot that's more vulnerable in the back of your head, but shouldn't that be protected? You don't really have a way to defend the back of your head, though. Yeah, but d- then if someone gets to that spot, you're fucked. I mean, that's that should be what it is, because that's reality. Do you remember the early days? I don't know if you ever saw this, but Henzo Gracie had a fight early on in one of those... Um, those organizations that didn't go anywhere, like World Combat something or another. And uh, he took this guy down who was a judo guy. He mm-hmm. took him down, got his back. And in those days, you could elbow the back of the head. And Henzo just got his back uh. and just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And then put him out. And then I, I think he strangled him after he elbowed him in the back of the head. But it's like having that ability to to hit that spot – that's real. Changes. It's it's Changes also there, if we're we're this is the sport of fighting. That's a fucking real vulnerability. The back yeah. of the head's a real the, the the idea that a guy can cover up like this and you have to go around that and this one glaring spot in the back of the head exists. And doctors will tell you, oh, you can't get hit there. And he's like, but there's a lot of times where it's okay to get hit there. Like here's yeah. one, head kicks. Yep. A lot they of head kicks. Around. They wrap around. They catch you right at the back of the head. We know this. We know this with wheel kicks. We know this with roundhouse hooks. kicks. Hooks happens all the time, and it's okay. 
And then, but some people like I don't, I don't know. I think it's more so frowned upon on the ground. I don't know why. I don't. I'm, I mean, I guess that it's more, it's more dangerous. Mm. But then that's also a good spot to hit. Then the, when John Jones finished Alex, Alexander Gustin in the second fight, those were the way those shots to the back of the head. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Um, bro. There's a lot of times where guys bro, in the I middle was, of the heat bro, of battle. They, 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 they let that aside. They let yeah. that all right. Some of them definitely, when someone's raining down blows and a guy's covering up and turning, some of them are going back there. Mm -hmm. I just don't, I get, a doctor, I understand. If they would come to me and say, no, this is a particularly vulnerable area, okay, well then stop fighting. You shouldn't be fighting. No one should fight then. Because your whole head's a vulnerable area. Right. If you get wheel kicked in the temple, like, that's a vulnerable fucking area. This little yeah. skinny-ass piece of bone that protects the side of your head, and someone swings a giant heel, and it comes slamming yeah, right into boy, there. Jorge Surratt, he did that to, I think it was Ben Lagley. He fought, even when he fought him back in the days, like, one of my sparring partners, like, my first sparring partner when I first came in. He did a wheel kick, and his leg, like, wrapped around and just, bow, clocked him in the back of the head. Yeah. And then he kind of fell off. Bow, that's a bad one. Forward. That happens all the time. I remember uh, when uh, Edson Barboza wheel kicked Terry Edom in the head. Oh, man. Ooh. Yeah. yeah stiff. And th we were talking in the commentary saying that Terry's got to do something to take more chances, but he could risk getting knocked, knocked out. out. And yeah, boom. he'll risk getting knocked out. No. Yeah, right oh, when man. it happened. It was crazy. That was the first, I think that was, might have been the original. Andy's coming. <laughs> <laughs> the stiff. Yeah. When guys go stiff like that, that's a hard way to, go, to come back from. That's, those are rough knockouts, especially Terry Adam never really came back from that fight. Never was world class again after that fight. I think it's like a fear. It's got to be like some type of fear. And this is what Kamaru's going to have to deal with whenever he fights Leon. Yes. I mean, it's, it's all right. Like, I think he he lost one fight, right? Yep. One fight early in his career. Early in he his got career. Choked. He got choked, right? Mm -hmm. All right. It was cool. You made it in jiu -jitsu, You make mistakes. You know you can get choked. By, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, now, getting knocked out, bro. Like. It's got to be different. Yeah, you know I mean? it's very different. It's very I different. I believe it is too. So there's a moment in Kamaro's fights when in his uh, career where Damian Maya got his back and it was standing. Damian Maya had him clinched up against the cage and he was getting his back and the referee separated him and I was like, "What the fuck did you just do?" Yeah, it changed the course of the fight. I'm to this day I'm fast because this was Damian Maya basically in his prime as a welterweight. Kamaru coming up, and there was this moment where Damien has Kamaru's back. He's like hanging on him. He's clinched up against me. He's in a very good position, and the referee separates him. And I remember at home going, No! Hey, what the bro. fuck are you doing? Right. How are you separating this? And that's always a weird thing when they choose to separate somebody or separate, <sighs> stand up, or like. Um, cause he was telling me that I needed to work uh, li uh, when I was on top of Glover, and I'm hitting him with elbows. Yeah, he was like, he was like, oh, he's like, he's like, you gotta work, you gotta work, Jamal, which is crazy. Cause why do they say that? What that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't you know. work when you need to work. If you are on top and you're, well, I was being heavy. Yes. I was being heavy on. Yes. I'm just, I'm just zapping. I'm just zapping. Yes. I'm like, just, you know what I mean, kind of, basically, kind of crushing this diaphragm at this point. Yeah, and it's like, oh, you gotta work, you gotta work. I'm like, oh, why? I am. You I are working. I'm not allowed to cook the stew. Yes, not cook the turn, stew. Now I'm not allowed to turn the, turn the pressure cooker off. Go do go 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 make the rice. Right. You right. Know? You should be able to pick when you go when yeah. you're in a dominant position when you're tr controlling a guy. Yeah, hundred percent. And this, I hate stand ups. I feel like yeah. if someone could take you down and hold you down, that is on you to get up. That like having a stand up just because the crowd's bored. Tell them to go watch baseball. That's boring as fuck, and people watch it every week. Yeah, but you got to protect the product, Joe. You got to protect the product. I don't believe that. I, I believe <laughs> the guys like you will always rise to the top. Uh, I'm going to get up. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to get up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I feel like if you didn't have that option available, guys would be very focused on getting up. Instead yeah. of thinking that they could just wrap their guard around you that's and wrap their head around you and just hope for a stand-up. Because yeah. sometimes the referees will do that. They get a guy in a, a guard position, and the, no one's doing anything. The guy can't do anything. They'll stand him up. They'll stand them up, stand them up. And the crowd cheers and everybody thinks, that's a good job. I go, no, you've ruined the flow yeah, of the standing fight. Standing up, you can go at your pace. Yeah, and if you're on top and you, if guy's got you in his guard and he's squeezing and holding on to you, how long can you do that? 
Can you do that for the full five minutes? You might not be able to. You might relax a little, and then that person's going to get out. And that's what the sport's all about. The sport's all about you being able to figure out how to get out of a bad position and get to a better position, and someone being able to control you and minimize the damage that they take and maximize the amount of damage they can put on you. That's what it's all about. So if you have a stand-up, then you have a subjective person. Like It's up to them to decide. Stand them up. I've seen people get stand-up in side control, which is crazy. Yeah, I've seen that too. Crazy. Yeah, like It too. takes too long to get to that spot, yeah. and you only have five minutes to work it around. Yeah. I don't like stand-ups at all. I don't, I don't think yeah. that they should. I think that's one of the things we should get rid of. I really think, and people are like, oh, it's going to make it boring. Wrestlers are going to take people down. Figure it out how to not get wrestled. Mm -hmm. Figure out how to get up. There's ways to get up. It's not like once a guy gets you mount, no one in the world can get up. That's bullshit. Everybody can get up. It just scrambles. Things have to happen. That's part of the puzzle that mixed martial arts presents. Yeah, I think that <clears throat> I was only on the ground on top of Glover for what, maybe like a minute and a half. In a minute and a half, how many elbows did I hit him with? For me to actually get a warning to be stood crazy. up was crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. That was just that was just wild to me. And then like the whole he I think it was the fourth round. The fourth round when I was standing up and I was actually and I was actually starting to lay on lay it on him a little bit. He um he told him I think he told him maybe three or four times like like you got to show me something Glover you got to show me at what point are you gonna stop it bro right it was you know what close. I'm saying because because like it was, what, what, it was like the Izzy fight mm -hmm. do you think the Izzy fight should have been stopped when, when he had him on the ground when he had him no whenever he oh was. when Izzy at the end yeah yeah I think that one is a good stoppage because that scissor knee was coming you know like he he was hurt. I mean, I Izzy got caught clean. clean. I think he got clean. caught. I think he got caught clean, but I think also his leg was compromised because he actually got his leg the check. Yeah, his leg. He got a kick mm -hmm. check right before that, which is all right. So he's already stumbling. It's that same left but, leg that got chopped up in the first round. Yeah, but his like, but he was moving like, like yeah. he was weaving. Now I'm not gonna say it was a bad stoppage or whatever like that, but like if you believe that should have been stopped. The Glover right, the fight Glover fight should have been definitely stopped. been stopped. Yeah, that's the thing about being yeah. subjective about. A, a referee being able to decide and some of them are great like Herb Dean very rarely makes a bad call he's the best yeah. he's he's very good at it and some guys are just real quick with the trigger they'll stop a fight when a guy's just kind of a little rocked you know yeah, Herb baby we work for that stoppage on Santos yeah yeah I had to work I had to work for that one. Well, I was tired yeah well, I was tired <laughs> I think I hit him about like 50 something punches before mm. before we uh before we got in there before we got the yeah. We got the old wave off, but the um, but after that fourth round though, like you seen when they poured the water, when they poured the water on my head, mm -hmm. bro, that was all his blood. Like I wasn't bleeding from my head at all. Wow, like it was like he had like chunk. Like my coach was saying, like he's he had like chunks of his like chunks of his flesh and stuff over my hair and things Ooh. like that. So it was like, bro, what you got to do? To there it is. Well, oh, that's his stop. blood. That's like, you crazy. See, like, look, you see like the little white chunks and stuff in uh. my hair. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's so crazy. If you look, if you actually look at my mouth, I was like, I was like, where that's coming? I looked down and I see it. I'm like, where's that coming from? That's crazy. Where though, that's coming from? Am I bleeding? <laughs> his blood in your hair. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, a, that is interesting. But that's why the importance of good referees is, is, it's so significant because if you get a bad referee, you know, like, um, you know, some guys, they'll have like a personal beef with a certain referee, like a referee mm -hmm. stopped the fight too early. And they're like, I don't want him calling my fights. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't get that person. With I just say how I feel about the situation. and I move on from mm -hmm. it, you know, um, like Mark did what he did. My guess is he did what he did. Like Herb, they do what they do, what they do. You know, what I mean, I'll say how I feel about this situation or whatever. And then for now, all right, we, we on to the next. Yeah. You know? It is weird, though, that that's a factor in world championship fights, the, the subjective factor of when to stop a fight. Yeah. When to stop a fight, when to tell a guy to work, when to stand a person up. Bro, that cut was nasty, dude. Like, mm -hmm. if you were going to stop it for any cut, it's pretty nasty. I thought it was going to be that one, dude. It was, his eye was like, his eyelid brow was like completely like just... Like yeah, just torn apart. Well, I believe that in a lot of other places they would have stopped that fight. Like if you had it in a smaller commission, like maybe Arizona or something like yeah, that, they yeah, might have looked that at wasn't that. Brazil. Right, right, right. And also maybe something like New York. 
they're, they're you know New York does not have I mean New York has a nice history now with the UFC yeah. but when we first went there there was not a real history of uh, MMA in professional mm-hmm. New York because it was corrupt they kept MMA out of New York forever it was look at that cut dude yeah bro, that's that a nasty, nasty cut that's a nasty ass cut yeah yeah, but he could still see out of that eye, as opposed but he to was still, at one point he was yeah. standing there, he's wiping blood out of like wiping blood out of his eyes. Right, but it wasn't closed off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the Davison Figueredo fight when Brandon Moreno caught yeah. him with that left hook, and the eye just yeah. swole up and closed. Even in Brazil, they're like, "We got to stop this fight." I think that's part of the reason. Another part of the reason why they didn't want to stop the fight also mm. was because right before that they had just stopped the davis and figueredo fight for uh for a eye for an injury right you know so you stop another title fight and take another title a title from a brazilian off an of injury yeah here. that's an interesting mm. thing i wonder if that factors in like if one referee makes a quick call in an early stoppage and then the next fight the referee thinks about that and goes you know what i'm mm. not gonna let this one i'm gonna let this one go a little longer i'm not gonna hear those boos yeah, because those boos are real. When the but, crowd boos and you're in there by yourself with your sneakers on, going, "Ooh, everybody's yeah. mad at me." Yeah, but but it, to Clover's credit, though, he I had to technically pour it on him. I had to pour it on for rain setups and things like that. I was never I was never able to just sit and just power shot yeah. and just start cleaning his clock, you know, because um, I I tried. <laughs> God damn it, I tried. Yeah, but he just yeah, bro. He so just, experienced, you know I mean? so experienced, and so resilient. Let me but get off into that. But that, again, that's about as close to a stoppage as you're ever going to get without it being stopped. When you were on top yeah. of him and blasting him, I thought it was over. That's what I thought. I thought, this I thought was whenever over. he kept, I, I thought whenever he kept um, in the fourth, whenever I was laying, whenever I was landing on him, and then uh, especially after he threw it, threw it, I slipped, countered with the knee, started hitting him, landing a couple more uppercuts. You know, I'm like, I was expecting him to jump in between us and wave and wave it off. Mm. You know, but then like whenever I seen he didn't, then it's like all right, now he now he's fighting for under because he's trying to grind, he's trying to clinch up with me and things like that. It's like all right, I'm not gonna burn my, I'm not gonna burn my load. Just now, just start just picking shots, hitting him with hitting, him, start hitting him with clean shots. Again. But Glover never loses his composure to win. Never yeah. loses it. Never. Even after you head kicked him when he when mm-hmm. you had him stumbling and rocking. He's still, he's still like right here, focused. He's not, he's, you never see like, oh shit in his eyes. Yeah. Even when Gustafson took him out, you know, he was still in there trying, but just Gustafson just pieced him up. That was Gustafson, I think, finest performance when he stopped yeah. Clover. I mean, he just what a video game combination he hit him with. That was like you're playing the <laughs> Ultimate Fighter <laughs> video game. Yeah, <laughs> whoop, bam! Yeah. Perfect, uh, oh. three perfect uppercuts. It was amazing. That was an then amazing. The sli- then he slipped. He got hit with those three uppercuts and still threw a counter left hook. Mm-hmm. Still threw a counter left hook. He had to. He had to slip and then bang counter him again. Yeah, like that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Uppercuts aren't meant for people to be taken, bro. Right. They're not. That's a nasty punch. Remember when Rumble caught Glover with that uppercut? Yeah. Oof. Sent his two flying. Rumble, rest in peace. Yeah. Rest man. in peace, Rumble. What a great guy. Put him down was. on one punch. Oh, what the power that Rumble has. Man. Was crazy. And the fact From, that that guy carried that power all the way up into heavyweight when he was a welterweight. 170. He was never 170. He was 170 for three minutes. And then, right. and then, he, uh, got he made up. he made the weight, Joe. Yeah, he made the weight. He made the weight, Joe. All right. <laughs> he he looked like a he looked like a skeleton. He looked he like really uh did. he looked like uh one of the one of the people from Coco. Yeah. <laughs> whenever he did it. <laughs> but uh, he made like one it. of these, man. man. For real, yeah. For real. Yeah, yeah. One of these sugar skulls. Yeah, man. When I saw him uh in between fights once, uh he was so big. I said, Anthony, how big are you? And he goes, I'm about two thirty. I go, What the fuck is going on? How are you gonna lose sixty pounds? And that was like the, the real struggle when he decided to go up to middleweight yeah. and he missed middleweight, remember he fought Vitor, missed middleweight, and then uh came back as a light heavyweight contender and one of the fucking scariest guys in the division. It's Not wild. Silly. Wild. Just realized like he can't do that to his body anymore and he, he course corrected. But I wonder about those guys, like those guys. I mean, uh, he he developed an illness. I don't know if it was related and and unfortunately died. But those guys that cut that much weight, how much of a toll is that taking on their body? body. It's got to be taking a heavy, heavy toll. Johnny Walker, like Johnny Walker's got to be 240 pounds before he starts that guy. He's got to be. He's so big. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's... 
I don't know, bro. It's a heavy toll. I think somebody said something like he rehydrated back up to like 237 or something like that. I believe it. He looks like, like it. Yeah. Like when you're standing right. next to him, like, how the fuck are you 205 he's pounds? He's huge, dude. I'm, I'm just looking like, all right, where's the skinny part? No, not the skinny. So what does angle, it say here? Not... 248 pounds one week after his fight. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and But bro. look at him at even 248. He's not fat at 248. You big dude, man. Yeah, I mean, he's. It's interesting because he's actually been saying he's going to go up to heavyweight, and he's talking about fighting. He's got the right body type, bro. Yeah, he's got the right body type to bounce between the two. You know who else is big, dude? That Jolton Almeida, dude. He's oh, huge. he's big. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's big. He's a big boy. He was. He's heavyweight, but <clears throat> he'd be but, like another. He'd be. Well, I heard. Well, they actually. They actually offered me to fight him. A two hundred five uh, on the yeah on the on the on the twenty first of January. Yeah, he weighs like what Smith like two twenty ish as he fights as a heavyweight. He's on mm-hmm. the lighter side of heavyweight. Man, I don't know, dude. I know, but if I know he make if he makes it to two hundred five, that's about the same size as Johnny Walker. That's like the mm-hmm. same like body body build and things yeah. like that. So I think that'd be that that actually would be exciting. Yeah, be a good one. Is there any fighters from the past? That you look at and go, man, I wish I, I was in his his time. Uh, I wish I, I wish oh. I could fight him. I would have liked to, man. I, like, there's a lot of the greats I would have liked to test myself against. You know, for me, it just looks like it's just a test. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I would like to fight Anderson Silva at his prime, at his peak. I would like to fight uh, John Jones at his peak. Um, I would have liked to fight Chuck Liddell, mm. um, Leoto Machida. Uh, Brock Lesnar. Really? I would have fought Brock. Really? Bro, I don't, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> go wrong, bro. Brock is, Brock, is, Brock is a big name. He's he's done a lot and things like that. But I don't, I just don't think Brock was that good. I just think he was big. He was definitely big. I don't think he was skilled. I think he was just big. Well, you know, an example of that is when Brock fought Alistair. When mm-hmm. before Usada came around, when Alistair was on all the Mexican, <laughs> <laughs> on the good stuff, he was on the good stuff. Yeah. See, find that fight, Brock Lesnar versus uh, Alistair Overeem. Look <laughs> at the size of the ream. <laughs> that, that was a fully juiced <laughs> ream. The fully juiced ream was the scariest heavyweight that ever existed. Look at that motherfucker. God <laughs> His eyebrows damn, got dude. muscles. <laughs> if, if there's any man, any man that got fucked by Usada, it's Alistair Overeem. I think Alistair Overeem, when he was like allowed to supplement with whatever the fuck you could do. He was so because he was a world class kickboxer, K one Grand Prix champion. The type of stand up skills that he had, man. Brock nervous as shit right here. Of course he's nervous because he's got to try to take this dude down, and the dude's as big as him. And Alistair was also a European champion in Abu Dhabi. He won the European trials. You know, Alistair Overeem, he he fucking guillotined Vitor Belfort. Alistair Overeem can submit people too. Yeah. Very good ground game. But like he got to be able, like right, like. You got to be able to go from a no win to be a boxer mm-hmm. and to be a wrestler. He the, don't know that. Yeah, this was such a good you know fight, too. It was such a good fight because Alistair at this time was in his prime, entering into the UFC, and had great takedown defense. Look, stops that single, and his stand-up was unparalleled. You know, I mean, How by the time it? he fought Francis, he was already battle-worn and you yeah. know, off the sauce and you know, fighting natural. It's just not the same guy. I would have loved to have seen Francis in his prime versus this Alistair because they're, they're literally the same size. Just Francis is just a natural freak. Francis is like some of the best genetics I've ever seen in the heavyweight division. Yeah. He's the perfect heavyweight, so, especially since there's a weight class. Look, at, look how he's putting it on him, man. I mean, it's so skillful the way he frames off there. He sets up that left kick Dang. to the body. Oh, oh, that liver kick. Come on, man. And Alistair's liver kick, that's a totally different level. If you've never been hit by a hit world-class body, kickboxer yeah. like that, oof. Yeah. He's one of my absolute favorite fighters to watch in his prime. Alistair in his prime was the fucking man. He really was. Oh. And people forgot, man. It's the ones that shake your organs. Mm-hmm. And you take a couple steps and all of a sudden it just... Yeah. I remember when he fought Brett Rogers in Strike Force, and the moment he hit him with a leg kick, like whoop, you see Brett Rogers' eyes like, oh, oh boy, shit. 
this is a different thing. <laughs> this is a totally different thing. Like you're what in you there just with do a to my leg. elite world class kickboxer. Excuse me. So you would have fought him at heavyweight. Who? Brock, Brock Lesnar. Yeah, yeah. I'd have fought him at heavyweight. That's what yeah, you like that like fight. Two, Two two sixty five something like that. Yeah. He ain't gonna do nothing. Just try to arrest him. Just try to dry hump me. That's <laughs> 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 all he's gonna do. Just try to get a little frisky on me. When you think about your career, what do you have like a timeline when you want to get out of the game? Um, I juggle with it right now. I'm just I'm just having fun with it. Whenever I feel like um, people still want to see me, and like you know, I'm still I still have things that I want to do and accomplish, I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. Whenever I feel like I can't be at that level that, you know, that I'm accustomed to being at, yeah, uh, <clears throat> I'll find something else for me to do. I'll so right better. now you're just concentrating on excellence, just being mm -hmm. the best you can be. Do yeah. you have a thing that you want to do when you're done fighting? Yeah. yeah. What I do you wanna, want to do? I want to get into um, – in the entertainment, you know, I like to, I like to entertain. I like to make people laugh. You know, you see, you're a funny you see dude, roles. man. You're very funny. Your social media is excellent. Yeah, exactly. Sweet Dreams Hill. Is Sweet Dreams Hill MMA? It's, it's, uh, sweet underscore Dreams underscore J Hill. Okay, that, yeah. that's your Instagram. You, you're you're funny, man. You, you you got a good following on on Instagram, and you fuck around a lot. It's it's like that's mm -hmm. a that's a factor, like. Being likable, being someone that the, that is entertaining, that people enjoy, and that they can root for, like people watch, like where you at though? <laughs> like <that. laughs> where like you that. at though? <laughs> yeah, that, and yeah. that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, that kind man, of shit like... is that's valuable. You know, that's a that's a like if you looked at a, a overall like a fighter's marketability, there's your ability inside the the cage that's already there. But then there's like the personality, yeah. and that's the intangible. That's what makes people really want to see you. Yeah, and I you like, got that. I like being. I like you know. I like. I just like entertaining. Yeah, I like entertaining. I like. I like uh, seeing making people happy. I like making people laugh. You know, and uh, also another thing I want to do whenever I get done is like movies. I want to get in movies. I like. Mm. I like writing movies. I like writing my own stories. I like being like creative. And really. Like that. No shit, yeah. you write movies? I've written some uh, some movies and some TV series ideas. No yeah. shit. Interesting. Yeah. When did you start doing that? I started, like, honestly, it, like, it kind of started whenever I was, like, a little kid. You know, I don't know if anybody else ever played, like, with their toys, but, like, what I would do with my toys, like, my action figures, it'd be, like, a whole situation, right? Like, all right, this is the boss level on this floor right here. They on this floor. They doing this. He got you, girl. And then we do, like, fight scenes, but the fight scenes always had to lead up to something. So I, did, I was, like, kind of, like, making stories and making things up in my head already, like, we're just doing it with toys. Like, dang. Hmm. I wonder if I could ever create these in a, like, movies like i thought of this as a little kid so like that's just something i've always wanted to do what movies are you into like what, what what's the kind of shit that you really like a bunch of different things like action you know drama thrill you know scary movies i i, I kind of watch it all i dabble in it all so that's the the thought of concentrating on like later in your career yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you could do that 100 percent. you know what else you could do you could do a podcast and you could yeah, do that man. now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna yeah. get that going. I you could totally do that now, and it, it's a great marketing tool because you could talk about fights like after the fights happen. You could talk about you could like make a breakdown of what you think could happen, just mm -hmm. and just talk shit. Just right. get get together with your friends and fuck around. It's so easy to do, and you got a perfect personality for it. And it's a great marketing tool too. Like all all that stuff is great for your your overall profile. You know? Yeah, I've been meaning I've been meaning to do it a buckle down there. But then I come in and I see studios like yo set up and I'll be like, I don't have it set up. Maybe I should get it first. Well, I started out in my living room on a laptop. Yep. I mean, it was just me and my friends fucking around. It was the most low tech setup ever. <laughs> Web camera, you know, yeah. like fucking Ethernet cable into the laptop. <laughs> it was so low tech. Like you just need to start. Yeah. And then eventually you're like, you know what, we need better chairs. Eventually you'd be like, you know what, we need like a real table that has like microphones that come out of the table. Yeah. You know what, we need some lighting in this room. This room's got bullshit lighting. You know what, we need better cameras. You know, we need that. And then it'll all. I'm start that up. Yeah, but yeah, sure. the most important thing is just to start doing it. Like everybody yeah. thinks that they look at all these podcasts that are like real successful and they go, oh, I have to have a setup like that. Like, no, no, no. Just got to just set a fucking iPhone up in front of you on, on a table. 
you All know, right. and just just talk to it. Just talk into it. You could just do it on Instagram. It's not hard to do. You could just start. And then once you get started, people go, hey, when are you doing those again? And people get excited about it and they want to see it. And then you just build. Just build. Just keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get those started. That was, that was one of the plans whenever I got back home after I got done. Let me know. Now. Let me know. And I'll put it up on Instagram. But you, you yeah, definitely sure. could do that. that. You definitely could do that. And that's also another good source of revenue. You could get more money coming in that way. And, you know, when if a fight, like look at Chael Sonnen. Chael yeah. Sonnen has done a fantastic job of doing that. He breaks down fights, has his videos. They're all super popular and, you know, makes that transition into commentary as well. It's a, it's a smart thing to do for a fighter. It really is. Because everybody wants to hear perspective on, on this sport because it's such, you know, you got the people that train and the, the people that fight, and then you got other people that just like watching. And the mm. other people that just like watching, they kind of don't, don't know, know a lot of the shit that's yeah. going on. And if they get an inside from a world champion like yourself who explains what this is like and explains what's wrong with this, explains why this should have been different, explains what he could have done, that's so valuable to people and so to to get someone who's doing it like really no one right now in in the championship level is doing a podcast yeah are there no no aljo aljo started aljo's, aljo's, doing, aljo's, it. Doing, aljo's doing it he does it that's he's uh, the only one is he is he's doing it is he's doing it is he's, he's doing got, his own got, podcast yeah is oh. he, he does breakdowns he does uh reaction mm. videos he watched he just yeah. did it for my last fight um Volk does. Volk's been doing breakdowns. He does a cooking show. Things. Yes, he makes some good shit. He makes dude. some good he shit. He makes some good shit, yeah. What do you think about that fight with him and Makachev? I think that's a good fight. I it's, think it's a good fight. It's a crazy fight, it's a right? crazy fight, To go yeah. right from, like, 145-pound champion to the first title defense at 155 for Makachev. That's, yeah. a, that's a crazy fight, man. Yeah. That's this weekend. It's bro. It's, it's 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 crazy. Honestly, just mainly, I think a lot of it is because of how Islam beat Charles. Mm -hmm. Like nobody saw that coming. I thought it was gonna be a tough fight. I thought it was gonna be a tough fight too. And then he hurt him on the feet. On the feet. On the feet. Beat him with the beat him standing, and then followed him to where everybody thought he would be safe at. And to, I what I seen a clip of that choke that he did. To, I I know how that choke was so tight now. So because he most people. Finish the head and arm triangle. They go into the elbow, the bicep. Yeah, he went up, up higher. higher. He went hmm. up higher, and then locked so, it here. Tighter squeeze into yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I think his squeeze is just phenomenal. Yeah. Like, because if you see the way he, he tapped Drew Dober too, the same sort of situation. He gets guys on the ground, and they just. It's. I think it's just a next level power and squeeze. Mm -hmm. Some dudes just have next level squeeze. And next level, like, grappling power. And he's yeah. developed that his whole life. He's also enormous for 155. He's about right. as big as you can get and safely make 155 pounds. Is that, I've never seen him in person. He's so big. He's about yeah. 190. He, he looks to me like a one. He, he looks to me like, like a welterweight. Like he, when Where does Volk walk around at? Can't be nearly that high. I mean, no. Volk is 5'6". 170? I mean, he might. I think he was a big dude before. He, he was. He was a big rugby player. He yeah. got big fucking legs. He's tough as shit, man. He's, He's fast as fuck. Fast man. as fuck. He's fast as fuck. And I realized that the the Holloway fight, the last one. Yeah, and yeah. I was because I was there and I was I was actually watching it for mm -hmm. live. And you know, Max is fast in his own right. Yeah, and it's just like, bro. Every time Max tw Max twitched, mm -hmm. like smallest of twitch, smallest of twitch. Bang, he exploded and he came. Yep. And he beat him to the punch every time. Every time. Every time. It was yeah. crazy, dude. It was a he's, it, he's it was good. a big leap up. Like when you go to their first fight and then you go to their last fight, you, you see a different, different Volkanovsky. Completely different fighter. He's, he's on a whole nother level now. Yeah. That's that guy's I, drive, his fucking drive mm -hmm. is on top of the food chain. I think that's why I, I that's why I think he wins. Really? I think he wins. You think he wins over Makachev? I think he wins. Wow, that's interesting that you say that because that's a, that's he's a probably a heavy betting underdog. If I had a guess, if I had a guess, he's at least a two to one underdog. What what is uh what's the betting odds for this weekend? I think if he comes out loose, loose, creative, standing out to start, I think he catches him with something big. Interesting. He, he could either cut him open or he can have put some damage on him early, and that changes the fight. I think that's the main thing he's got to do is put some type of damage on him. 
and get that respect mm-hmm. out the gate. And I think he can do it. What do we got for the odds? They don't have it listed on the UFC site. I'm going to have to check a betting site. Okay. Um, the thing about um, Makachev is he might be – looking at him like it's an easy win yeah he might because he's been saying a lot of shit it might just be talk hey short man what is short man going to do to me you know he like he's been talking shit about him about how he's little and the 145 pounders are a big difference between that and 155 which is true Mm -hmm. but the other thing that's true is a lot of times when guys are cutting weight to get to 145 pounds they're diminishing their abilities you might see a better Volkanovski at 155. Even yeah. though he's the best of the best at 145, he might be doing that like compromise. Big favorite. Yeah, Are you big favorite. joking, bro? Wow. What? That's a big favorite. Damn, we're not allowed to bet on fights. So he's plus, I know, that sucks. That's Shit. plus 290 for Makachev, and uh, Volkanovski is uh, 375. What minus is it, what, 375. What is Volkanovski for the finish? Oh, that's got to be like a fucking. That's got to be crazy odds. Here, I could find that somewhere too. That's got to be crazy odds. What is going on in the Yair Rodriguez? Just let me see what the odds are. I think are if he that. hits him, I think he, he yeah, catches Yair's him. The like especially like that. That right hand is fast and it's sharp. Fast. I think le- that left hook is sharp and nasty yes. too. So um, I think if he hits him with one of those and then he starts working the legs, mm-hmm. that's a long yeah. night for Islam. It is. However, you. I mean, I know this doesn't, MMA and math doesn't really work, but if you look at Brian Ortega's fight with Volkanovski, Brian Ortega almost finished him twice. He Chuck, got so guillotine. close to that mounted guillotine. And That's the, a jujitsu based guy. Yes, but same techniques. I think it's a little top game, but, but top game pressure and crushing with that guillotine is what Ortega almost got him with. If Vol, I don't know if Volkanovski survives if Makachev gets him in that same exact oh. spot. Whoa. What? What's going on? The website, a different website, I would not name it. Uh, it's not, no, it's fine. It's, it has the odds way different. Hmm. Opposite almost. Bet on both. <laughs> Go, Go bet well, on the both. The one I checked before would have been printed uh, maybe a couple days ago, and this is updated live. So maybe the betting got so far the other way that they've switched it. I don't know. I might have to check a third site now to see what this is because they're even, this has a, Makachev is favorite to win inside the distance. Right. This is also favorite to win inside five rounds. Uh, interesting. Uh, wins by submission would be the, the highest bet here. Interesting. Yeah, so I'll, I'll check something else. Look at the see. draw. Well, the Plus 6,600. It's almost always worth throwing money on the draw yeah. just in case it happens. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, weird. Damn. If only, if only. 282. It's more I valuable than we all knew. fucking hate that they took away gambling. I feel like you should be able to bet on yourself. Yeah. I would love it if, like, you're fighting someone and we said Jamal Hill just bet a million dollars on himself. Like, oh! <gasps> Like that adds to the fight. Yeah, it makes it makes it more exciting. Justin James. You yeah, you should be able to bet on yourself, but the the thing that fucked everybody up was this whole thing with that one fighter that uh, looks like he took uh, a dive. Kraus. Yeah, well, Kraus's yeah. corner. Kraus is corner in this guy now. Now no one from Kraus's team can even compete in the UFC. You have to leave his camp if yeah. you want to fight in the UFC, which is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy because like if you can't like gamble, what difference does it make where you're training? If you can't gamble, like you just made a rule that said they can't gamble. Okay. So why are you telling them they can't train with this camp anymore? That doesn't make any sense. And they're, they're saying he's suspended as a corner. Okay, but what about training from that gym? You can't train from that gym? You can't train from the, right. That doesn't make any sense. It makes, you can't, yeah, you can't train a guy in a way that it's an unfair advantage. So what's the point? Why, why, can't, why can't these guys from that gym? If you're going to say Kraus can't corner him, fine. Just but influence, I guess. What kind of influence if there's no gambling? If the gambling's not legal anymore. You made gambling illegal. So why are you penalizing these young fighters that don't have anything to do with that? And they're coming out of this camp. And you're also, what if the guy's innocent? Okay, what if it turns out, because there's, there's an investigation, and what if it turns out he's innocent? You've destroyed his livelihood. livelihood. You've destroyed his gym. You've destroyed his reputation. And we don't even know what the, the, the reality of the situation is. The allegations are not good. The right. allegations appears like they knew a guy was injured. They told people who was injured he was going to lose the fight, and everybody right. bet on the opponent. If that's the case, that's some dirty that's shit. Dirty shit. Yeah. That's some dirty shit. But you know, if you want to bet on yourself or bet on your fighter, I feel like that should be that should good. Be okay. That's exciting. That makes it fun. You find out his brother bet fifty thousand dollars on him. Oh shit! It's it's fun. It makes it fun. 
I like that. I like fun. Yeah. Gambling's fun. Like if like they outlawed Please. all gambling on the UFC, I would be so upset. You're just gonna make bookmakers happy. They're so, just gonna do it illegally. Right. And that makes people and not only that, bro, gambling brings people in. The yeah. first thing I pulled up must have been an error because everything else has the opposite. It has a Makachev as a heavy favorite. Yeah, well what the other one say? Was it Volkanovsky the, not a heavy favorite? Yeah, the this is the first thing I pulled up is this. This and this might this must be an error. They must have just switched that on it. Oh, and okay. So it's it. Volkanovski is the favorite. Yeah, but so but the reg a, the regular one that you just pulled up the other yeah, site this has the site. This has betting across all websites. That's basically. Makachev is a four to one favorite, Correct. Yeah. which makes more sense. And you got Yair Rodriguez. He's a favorite over Josh Emmett. Five to one here. Five to one. Wow. Six. Interesting, interesting. You know, another fucking great fight on that card is Jack Della Maddalena and Randy Brown. That's a great yeah. fight. That's a yeah, great fight. That's gonna be a good one. That Della Maddalena is a bad motherfucker, and Randy Brown is long and talented. Bro, that, I bro, his really nose like that fight. gets me every time. Oh, it's bro. fucked. Yeah, it's you smashed. don't want that nose? No, I don't. <laughs> no. Yeah, that nose is smashed and never fixed. Yeah, but that's a hard nosed dude, man. And he's going to be fighting in Australia, which for a, a guy who lives there, man, that's such an advantage and not having to get on that 16-hour flight. Oh, yeah. that 16-hour flight will fuck up multiple days because even though you're training and oh, you're trying yeah. to get – you're still oh, – yeah. how hard was that's the flight to Brazil? It wasn't hard at all. No? Going down there, we uh, we actually flew out at night, so – I fell asleep before the plane, before oh, the plane nice. even hit the before the plane even left the ground. And by the time I had woken up, we had already been up in the air for like five hours. Oh, nice! So it was just like wake up. We got about four and a half hours. I watched like two movies and we were there. And so then, once you got in, do you train immediately to to mm-hmm. acclimate your body? What do you do? I just chill. How I'm many chill. days in advance of the fight did you get there? Uh, I got there Monday. We left Sunday and we arrived Monday morning. Oh, that's Monday not much time at all. Fight. Yeah. Have you ever had a fight at a heavy altitude? Um, not heavy, but but higher. I know Vegas is higher altitude than Michigan is. Oh, is it though? It's like fifteen hundred. Yeah, but that doesn't really factor in. Would really it factor? Could. Does it? It might. Did you, did you notice it at all? I felt a little different. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing I'm thinking about is um, when uh, Cain Velasquez. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. In Mexico City. Yeah, the the w- the Mexico City one is a rough one. Because uh, Fabricio Verdum, uh, he got there real early, like months early, yeah. and he trained in the mountains above Mexico City. Like Fabricio did it the right way. He spent a lot of time. And that's a guy that doesn't get the credit that he deserves. I believe Fabricio Verdum should go down as one of the all-time great MMA fighters, one of the all-time great heavyweight champions. If you look at all the heavyweight champions and what they accomplished, Fabricio Verdum tapped out all the legends, all the legends. Tapped out Cain Velasquez, tapped out Fedor, tapped out Minotauro. I mean, dude, Fabricio Verdum in his prime was a motherfucker. And again, that top level jujitsu, world championship caliber jujitsu. I don't think his prime lasted long enough. Didn't last long enough. But Uh, if you just look at his accomplishments, just by virtue of accomplishments, you have to put him in there as some of the all time greats. Yeah, for sure. And when he tapped Fedor, when he caught Fedor in that triangle, I was like, oh, 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 oh. But honestly, it was crazy. <clears throat> now that I think about it, who's, who's, who's prime and heavyweight actually did last that long? Stipe. Stipe's probably, if you look at the all time oh, heavyweight it? greats outside of the UFC, outside of the UFC, you know, or outside of the UFC, you have to say Fedor. Right. You have to say yeah, he's yeah, the Fedor, greatest. Yeah. He's the greatest. Fedor might be the greatest heavyweight of all time. There's always going to be that thing because he didn't fight in the UFC. Yeah. And then there's Cain Velasquez in his prime, who was the motherfucker. He was, man. he was the motherfucker. But I always wonder, like Cain Velasquez in his prime, Junior Dos Santos still caught him with caught one him punch with and one knocked punch him out. Him, yeah. What would Francis have done to him? Would he have done to him the same thing he did when they fought later? Yeah. Because when they fought later, Cl- Francis clipped him once and put him out in the first round. Maybe Francis would have done that his entire career. Like, maybe. Cause I remember that damn fight. That was, when they, that was on Fox. They put one fucking fight mm-hmm. on that entire card, yep. and he came out and got clipped in like a minute and a half. Yep. And it was like, all right, see, good night, folks. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> it was like, He caught him with one big punch. And apparently uh, Kane had a really fucked up knee going into that fight. Yeah. He couldn't train right, and they just they made him fight. Like, he had a fight. Yeah. It's like, hey, this is a big deal. It's on Fox. Got to defend your title. And then he goes out there with a blown out knee. But then dominated him dominated in the rematch. Bro, oh, the two yeah, rematches. Two rematches, both of them. They were hard to watch. They weren't even close. They were hard to watch. They weren't even close. Kane had cardio like you couldn't fucking believe. That was the scary thing about Kane. Like, he never stopped coming at you. It was like a Julio Cesar Chavez approach. Whereas, like, yeah. Julio Cesar Chavez, he was one of the greatest boxers of all time. But he wasn't really a one-punch guy. He would beat the beat fuck you out of you. Just keep coming, never tired. Combinations, always moving, always moving. I mean, I, I loved watching Julio Cesar Chavez in his prime. But that's what Kane was like as a heavyweight. No, t- he just just never tired. Just constant volume. Like, volume you never see in the heavyweight division. But yeah. still... Like what would Francis have done to that? Like Francis was, has that nuclear what, what, option. Which Fran? Which Francis? It depends on Francis at what level. Stipe right? two, that Francis. Francis when he yeah. knocks out Stipe, <laughs> that Francis might be the greatest he heavyweight yeah. of all time. Yeah, it's kind of even, even against Cyril Gaon, right? He turned into like he he adjusted, realized, yeah. all right, you're not about to just keep him chop my legs and took him down. So and this is Francis with a really fucked down, up bro. leg. He had a yeah. torn ACL and a torn MCL going into that fight. His leg was fucked up, and he won Put with that fucked up leg. Class of just grappling. Without being able to do what he does best, which is strike. Kind of crazy. Couldn't move well on that one leg. Yeah. Without the credentials, honestly, probably without... <clears throat> how, how do you say this? Like, without the credentials, because obviously somebody's more decorated. Right, right. And things like that. But if we're talking, like, just for pure gifts, and you have probably have to go with Francis. So I can't. I can't think of a. I can't think of a. I can't think of a heavyweight champion across history that he couldn't beat. I think st- the one, the Francis that fought Stipe the second time. What? Well, B- DC said it best. DC's like patient Francis is a scary Francis because right. he was patient in that fight, jab. calculated. Yeah, he, he started the. He began the end was a jab. Mm-hmm. Bro. And his hands, man, you get clipped with one of those bombs. Woof. That Alistair Overeem knockout to this day was one of the scariest knockouts I ever saw. Man. That shovel hook, he hit him with that left hook. Yeah, bro, that was Alistair's fault, though, because, like, bro, you felt the first one that he missed you with, and you still stood in there trying to swing with him. Mm -hmm. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. (laughs) (laughs) You should have read just like the dude from Get Out. (laughs) Get him out of there. Yeah, look at that. (sighs) I mean, bro, he's looking at the seats behind him. Yeah. Yeah, we call that uh, we call that getting your Koofy knocked off. <laughs> Koofy Jones, Koofy Juice. Yeah, you see that? You see that? You see that sweat hanging Look flying? You see the beads oh. of sweat flying off his chin? Oh that, my god! That's Koofy Juice right there. That was a crazy, crazy knockout. <laughs> but again, that's that's the thing about Francis. It's, it's like crazy. that to have that kind of power is a, it's such a game changer. It's like what uh, Teddy Atlas <laughs> says that about um, Deontay Wilder, that he said he's got that eraser. His head and his neck were asleep, but the rest of his body was still awake yeah. in that picture. When it first connects, you could see where his head goes to sleep. Look at the difference in Alistair's body between Alistair when he fought Brock Lesnar. It's a different human being. It's a, That's natural Alistair. And natural yeah, Alistair, no. oh my goodness. No. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Boom, that left hook. Put Bam, his, and then that hammer hand down trying to blindly swing. You got to see where you're punching. Ooh-wee. He just, and he just stepped inside of it, too. That's mm-hmm. all. Alistair threw it. He just kind of stepped inside of mm-hmm. it. Boom. Bang. Yeah. Well, yeah, Alistair was just, I mean, he was wide open in that. It just, nope. It's just not the same Bang. guy. <sighs> not the same guy when, you know, he's not supplementing. That first left miss, bro, you mm-hmm. got to get out get out get out spin move yeah, he changed his style remember he changed his Stop. style like when when he did go natural he changed his style and started moving a lot more and he, he was training with uh jackson winklejohn right wasn't he who alistair? alistair i think he was pretty sure he was he was mm-hmm. moving a lot more he was trying to you know like to outpoint guys oh, and like, yeah, yeah like yeah. when he fought junior dos santos and mm-hmm. that was a good fight he he just used a lot more movement. He was just like a, more cautious, different a f- fighter. 
styles make fights, right? Mm-hmm. So that might work against one fighter, but not against the other. Yeah. Honestly, that should have been the approach that he took in and out, moving like that. Should he had that's the approach he should have took to Francis, chop his legs, for sure. yeah. chop at his legs first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, for make sure. Him try to reach you and try to try to make him reach you. Don't let him catch you coming because there you got caught coming to him. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, bro. Yeah. And then like just a, I'm not, I'm, I've never been a fan of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It seemed like he was just like a little tentative in that fight, like just feared of of that power, just aware, mm-hmm. hyper aware of that power. But in being scared of it, he put himself right in the line to get to get yeah. hit with it bad, like yeah. clip bad. Yeah, that Francis, like the Francis that beat Stipe in the second fight, I would have loved to seen him against anybody that ever lived. Yeah. Including Fedor in his prime, all those guys in their prime. Just Francis was just so ferocious, and any time he touched you, you were doomed. He would have blocked uh, if you put in, you put him in the early days, and have, he blocks a lot. A lot of dudes don't win a title. Yeah, a lot of dudes. A lot of dudes don't win a title. They don't even get close. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's next level. That's why. I was very upset when he didn't re-sign with the UFC. I'm very happy for him if he yeah. gets that giant payday. If he gets a big, they're talking about him and Deontay Wilder now. I read that today. Talking okay. about him and Deontay Wilder in a boxing match. That would be violent. It would be violent. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Deontay can be hit, but Deontay hits Deontay people. Deontay hits Ooh. hard, bro. You don't talk about trying to find your equal. You found yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that last knockout he had mm-hmm. it looked like a jab. Moving away. Moving like, away. C- c- moving away. Pink. Yes. And the dude stiff. Stiff as a board. Yeah. He's got that gift of God. It's like when he knocked out Luis Ortiz, like whoo, stiff touch. Just right to the forehead. Blap. And you see yeah. like Ortiz on the ground going, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> he hits guys, and it's like they've never been hit like that before. You can see the look in their eyes. Yeah. Only Tyson Fury. He, Ty- bro, rises, he was. I don't know how he got dead, up. Like the Undertaker, just sits up. Man. And then won the rest of the round. Won the rest of the fight. Yeah, crazy, crazy. And then you know the the rematch, and then the the third fight. The third fight, he got hurt real bad. You know, and and Deontay clipped him perfect yeah. with the right hand. You see the fat ripple through his whole body mm-hmm. when he got hit. It's like boom. In the slow mo, you see it ripple all the way down to his love handles from the impact. That's the kind of power Deontay has. Yeah, Deontay is is nasty, bro. He's greatest one punch knockout artist in the history of the heavyweight division. I think. I don't think there's anybody that has greater one punch knockout power because you're talking about a guy whose entire career was knockout wins. Knockouts. Only Stavern yeah. made it to the decision, and, bro, and then he fucked him up in the rematch. Rematch, bro. Yeah. Woo. Bad. Yeah, and he he has a he had a he had a he, the way he blocked like this was mm-hmm. just not what I would recommend for <laughs> for like somebody punching like Deontay. It's just bro. It's, yeah, you're just holding still and lining up a frame for him to. Yeah, you're still getting jostled by those you. shots. Even if your hands are up like this, if he's hitting full blast on that hand, it's yeah. bang. It's still rattling your skull. Yeah, that was one of the things that you did with Glover when Glover blocked that head kick. It didn't matter. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter because it's still blasting through. But that was the setup. That was that was how I wanted it. That's why I moved the way that I did. You know, you notice I was moving him, so I'm moving, moving him, and then I pop a. I either I pop a. I pop a jab or I just look low. I just mm. look. I, I just gave him that that little that little look low and bang. Just stick. Just put the leg up. You know, look low. Is that up. something you've been incorporating more into your game? The the head kicks, the head, bro. The head kick, the the leg, the uh, the left uh, leg kick, head kick, body kick was the first weapon I had walking in. Really? That was the one thing I knew I could beat some. My, if you go back and you watch my uh, my first amateur fight, it's on YouTube. Um, I knocked him out with a head kick. Really? Yeah, knocked him out. With Four a head months kick. into training. That was six weeks. Was six, six weeks into training. Yeah, about six to eight weeks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I knocked him out, bro. Hit him. I hit him. It dropped. Yeah, uh, kind. He kind of stumbled. I hit him again, and then bang right off of that. Boop. Left. Man, like head kick came up. So that's always been one of your big weapons. It's always been one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a giant weapon to have. Guys who don't throw head kicks. It's like man, you're you're missing out on just an enormous part of the game. Those are the dudes who don't throw them. They can't. Yeah. Can't quite get the leg up there. Which is crazy. Like, hey, man, maybe you should work on that. Yeah. I mean, if you're in a business where people are kicking you in the head and you can't kick them, kick in, the them head, back in the head, that seems kind of crazy. 
I mean, when, when a world championship fight is won that way, like Leon Edwards and Kamaru Usman or like John Jones versus DC, there's something about a head kick, man. I mean, that is the great equalizer. Yeah, because you got to deal with it the right way. You can't just put it like that way. Now, as far as timing, yeah, he got his he got his arm up. But there was no way for you to block a flush, clean head kick with no. one arm. No, no, even no. two arms are still getting rattled. Yeah, yeah, especially your kick. That, that was like you were setting it up beautiful. Snap. Yeah, his technique. Wow. Just turn it over right, yeah. there, right when it needs to. Be and turned. you landed it multiple times too. Mm -hmm. It's like he didn't make an adjustment. You you kept landing that shot. He made an adjustment. He yeah. did. He still, he made an adjustment. Um, the thing was is just. I mean, whenever he made it, he adjust, I adjusted. And mm. then I eventually worked my way back to it. Mm. And he wasn't ready for it. You know, you can you can be like, all right, yeah, I'm not going to let him. He caught me with a head kick. I'm not going to let him hit me, hit me with a head kick. All right, now he's punching you. Now he's throwing straight down the middle and he's hitting you in the face. Now he's hit, throwing straight and he's hitting you to the body. Now he's chopping your legs. Now he's kicking you in the body. Now he's fainting. You know what I mean? He's fainting and he's, and he's catching you with combinations. Now all mm. of a sudden, now, now, now uh, you, you land a shot. All right, now I got to try to press forward. All right, step, step, side, head kick, bang. Now you get hit with the same mm. head kick again. And it's like, damn. I, I thought I had to adjust. It's like, am I am I going to be able to, like, it's, the doubt starts to seep in. Yeah. You yeah. know? And I understand that. I understand how, I understand. I've gone through a lot of things in training, a, long, a lot of things over, like, I've had total amateur, I think amateur, I had like 13 fights. So I'm I have dealt with a lot of different things. So I, I kinda I got the idea of how to process things and how people think whenever they whenever they go through it. Like getting hit hard. Which is still why I don't understand how Glober didn't pause at all. Cause I've been hit hard. Like I've been like hit hard. It's like Who hit you uh, the hardest in in the UFC? In the UFC? Darko Stosi. Yeah? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. What Tiago, you Tiago his fist. <laughs> 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 no, he hit me with a um hit me with like a overhand. Like an overhand like 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 a loop and a hook, like a yeah. bow, like one of those. Um yeah, probably. Well he hit me the most, probably. But Santos. Santos hits. Really Santos. Hard. Santos hits hard. He he hits hard, but the only punch that really like, it didn't hurt, but it did damage. Like the one that swelled my eye up, mm -hmm. you know. But um, he hits hard if he if he, I'm pretty sure he hits hard if he lands flush on you. The only thing is he don't put himself in position to, mm. to like stick you. So like whenever he's hitting, if you notice, like whenever I was going through him, you know, he was landing those. I'm still I'm, I'm roll. You can roll them all. You can mm -hmm. roll his shots off. And I think that's why Glover survived uh, against him because he was fucking Glover up. Yeah. No, he was a dangerous dude. To this day, he gave John Jones some serious fucking trouble. And John John destroyed his legs. Yeah. He he needed double knee surgery after double. that fight. Both of his him. knees were destroyed. I've seen him in the wheelchair. Yeah, crazy. John just destroyed his knees. A sidekick to the knees. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, John is so good at that. What one of them? One of the one of his knees they messed up. He tried to kick John, and John slid mm -hmm. back and made a mess, and he hyperextended his leg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he fucked up both knees in one fight, and really was he, never the same again. I think he wins. I think he wins in PFL. You think so? I think he wins. Yeah, is that where he's going now? That's where he went. Yeah, he did he go there. To, he went to the PFL. PFL is interesting. There. You know, it's interesting to have more time. options. I just I wonder how much longer they can keep putting out that cash. You know, I don't know how much money they're making. I haven't seen them in a packed arena. I don't think they have a packed arena. Yeah. I don't think they can sell a packed arena. Maybe they can sell if they get some bigger name fighters. But you know, Bellator pulls off big places now, and they they get big numbers on television. They got a million for Fedor, Ryan Bader too. That's a lot. You know, a million people watching you, that's a lot. Mm. And so it's good. It's good for everybody. The more there's real competition, the How more. How do you watch Bellator fights? You can watch it on CBS. You can watch it on Showtime. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I have it on my DirecTV. No. DirecTV looks for it whenever it comes up and it okay. records it for me. But, yeah, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not as big a Bellator fan as I, maybe I should be. But I'm aware of there's there's guys over there that are real talented. Yeah. The Johnny Elbin, that middleweight yeah, dude. Yeah, that's my, uh, my dog. He's, Shout out Johnny. He's legit. Yeah, he's I met, fucking I met legit. Johnny, uh, 
we went down to went down to Florida for my boy Sabah's birthday. And I met Johnny down there. He's a cool dude. Yeah, he's a cool dude, and he's focused. He's focused and driven. He's one of those guys that I got my eye on. You know, I'm like that yeah. guy. He could be uh, he could be a champion in any organization. He's got that kind of quality to him, and a, a real good wrestler. Yeah, real good wrestler, and fucking striking is nasty too, man. When he beat Gegard Mousasi, I think that opened up a lot of people's eyes because Gegard yeah. is a fucking assassin. Nice. Gegard is a smooth criminal. That dude is good. And when he beat Gegard, I was like, wow. And he beat Gegard on the feet too. Like that was that was a big fight for for Johnny. And I'm I'm I look at him like that like cause cause Gegard, after Gegard had beat Chris Weidman and Gegard left and went over to, to Bellator, I was like, wow, like I guess I guess we're not gonna see him in the UFC anymore. That sucks because I think Gegard I would have loved to see in Gegard versus Anderson, or rather, uh, Gegard versus uh, Israel. I would have loved to see him versus Robert Whitaker. I would have loved to see him. You yeah. know, he's it's he's a lot of fun matchups to get him yeah. really into. And he was right at that level where I'm thinking he might be the best in the world. He was like right there, and then he went over and won the Bellator title, and eventually lost to Elbin. You know, there's. It's good to have these other organizations, though. I really yeah. do. I think that's. It's great for the fighters. It's great for the fighters to have financial options. options. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't, like I said, I don't know where Francis is going. What I'm genuinely hopeful, I really hope Francis goes, gets some big money boxing match, gets successful. Then we figure out who wins versus John Jones and Cyril Gaon, and then they offer him what he's worth and then have him come back. And maybe they do uh, like a, a. you know another world title fight with francis coming back i think the i think the market and the landscape can change a little bit with the whole with jake paul yeah signing with the pfl very interesting it brings it brings eyes it brings attention and which brings money yeah that's he might be the only guy that can really waken up people to the pfl because he's so popular in mainstream what if francis comes too oh yeah you know, francis too, oh right? yeah Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm, but who's he gonna fight? Who do they have over there to fight? I'm like, Francis versus John Jones is the biggest fight you can make. That's yeah, especially 100%. if John Jones can beat Cyril Gaon. If John Jones beats Cyril Gaon, that is the biggest heavyweight fight that's ever existed. Who's on the way out the door in the UFC? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Who is who's on the a, way out the door? Who's on their way out? But this guy's on the way up, like uh, Sergey Pavlovich. That dude's yeah. a bad motherfucker. Yeah, I was shocked by what he did to Ty. Woo. I was shocked, bro. Crazy, right? I was like, man, what? I know. Patient. And so accurate. Accurate. So good. Yeah, bro. Yeah, he's, he's legit as he's fuck. Good. He's, and he's, kind of flying under the radar with mainstream I can't people. bet against him anymore because I, I bet against him the last couple of fights. <laughs> not bet. Yeah, he's not betting. Gambling's illegal for It's fighters. illegal. Yes. We, we don't break. We were... We believe in following rules here. <laughs> we follow all the rules. Well, here. you could bet back then, right? Wait. The gambling thing is a recently illegal thing. Yeah. Fuck like, that. Uh, but yeah, but they need anytime to I don't, I don't like picked against him, <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. Um, I was wrong. It's hard to tell until he starts beating really good Tastes, people. But he, like this, he, he doesn't look like he moves. His, he's actually pretty quick. Yeah. For, you know what I mean, for 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 a heavyweight. Yeah, I think this was a fight. I think I had Alistair in this fight. Oh, yeah, and this is up, the Alistair ends up fight. piecing him up. It was a good fight. And this was a, a fight where no one knew nice. uh, who Pavlovich was. Yeah, this and Alistair not... took him down. Wrestling Alistair. Yeah, Alistair hammer-fisted him. Look at this. Alistair had him in fucking serious trouble here. Look at this. That's it. Yeah. So Alistair stopped him. Yeah, he was... And then that was a lot of people's like f- understanding of who he is. And then he goes from that and then starts going on a fucking tear. But wrestling Alistair. When Alistair started wrestling people, bro, that was a bad dude, bro. Well, Alistair was, was a dangerous motherfucker, man. No, yeah. When he, but whenever he started wrestling, yeah. though, like grappling, like mm-hmm. actually taking dudes down, putting them on their backs and yeah. laying off that, that was... That was that yeah, was look, the guy has the most one of the most incredible careers in combat sports. He fought in pride. He fought in Dream. He was the Dream Heavyweight Champion. He won the K1 Grand Prix. He won the Strike Force title. Comes over to the UFC and you know becomes one of the best heavyweights in the world of the UFC too. And now he's mm-hmm. back at Glory Kickboxing. He just beat Badr Hari in a kickboxing fight. It's like, I mean, Alistair's been doing the damn thing for 
20 plus years at a, at a world class level. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. It's like heavyweight Glover. Yeah. Some in a lot of ways, yeah. Wow. Just but he's just not as old. It's just he just got his start very young. Remember when Alistair was first started fighting, he was so skinny. Yeah. It was yeah. so skinny. This <laughs> is a twig. Yeah, but he man. was ripped though. He's yeah. always he's always been ripped as shit mm -hmm. though. Yeah. But he was fighting at two oh five. Chuck Liddell he knocked him out at two oh five. Mm. And he was beating Chuck up and then Chuck caught him against the ropes. But again, at heavyweight for me, Ngano versus the winner of Jones and Cyril Gan. That's the biggest fight you can make, and I, that's what I really hope. I hope Francis goes and gets some big money boxing match. And God forbid if he wins, if he wins, we'll probably never see him again. Nah, probably not. If he wins, he'd just probably Thank be you. raking in the cash. Next thing you see, Francis is covered in diamonds, jewelry, <laughs> <laughs> halfway naked on the back of uh, Sports <laughs> Illustrated. <laughs> yeah, look, he could he could do it. The guy's main skill is his striking. So if if he wants to box, I mean, you're dealing with a guy who's 265 pounds natural. Mm -hmm. And he has to cut a little bit of weight to make the 265-pound weight limit in the UFC. There's no weight limit in boxing, so he doesn't have to cut anything. Francis, Francis had to cut to make weight? Sometimes Francis was over 265. Damn. I wouldn't say cut. I would say, like, Just watch his food and right. watch... But, you know, I talked to Eric Nixick at one point in time. He was over 290. Damn. Jesus. That's a big fella. That's a That's lot a of horsepower dude, behind those punches. Yeah, it was Ooh, a big dude. Boom, boom. Bang. Nah, nah, man, bro. Him boxing Tyson Fury, bro. I don't know if that's a bad idea. <laughs> I think personally, it's a bad idea. It's a good idea if you want a, a, a lot of zeros a lot of in your money. bank account. Right, right, right. But like, but to be humiliated, I mean, yes, yeah, I hurt your brand. Yeah, because he said he could have weighed three hundred seven here. Oh my Man. god, <laughs> was that after his uh, Just, knee surgery? Uh, August. It might have been after his knee surgery. Yeah. So it's probably, you know. I mean, I, I'd rather fight that Francis than in shape, ready, uh, ready and on point Francis. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, Tyson's a big dude. He's he's big. He, you yeah. see, he's giving up the size. 6'9". And not only that, he knows how to box. Like, yeah. He knows the science behind the punch. Oh, he yeah. knows the science behind the counters. He knows yeah. the science behind the setups. That's... That's not that's not something. Then you're coming into his world. That's mm -hmm. not something to play with, bro. And he's gonna keep you on the end of that stick for yeah. as long as he can. And he's gonna box you up. And he's gonna clinch yeah. you whenever he can. And I was all about to say, as soon as you try, as soon as you try to wind up big, you try to land big, he's just gonna tie up, tie mm -hmm. you up. Yeah. And there is no, oh, we'll fight, we'll fight to get loot. And there is none of that. Yeah, it's just a restart. And then with Francis, the other thing is like, if he fights someone who's a lesser named opponent and loses that fight, that's yes, terrible. So it's almost like he's got to jump right into the deep end of the pool. Mm -hmm. But I think right now Tyson Fury is concentrating on the Usyk fight, and that seems like it's going to happen. So if Tyson Fury fights Usyk, you know, that kind of like leaves Francis in limbo, and that's why I think they're talking about Deontay Wilder. Right. See if that is real. I know, I said, only uh, Wilder said it in an interview. He said he wants to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. And there, I don't think Wingan has responded to that yet. I was okay. looking at it. So he's just putting it out there. Mm -hmm. I know so there was some talk. I think there was some talk of Dillian White, too. There was some talk of like some other top flight heavyweights. But that's the problem is like those guys are fucking good, man. Like if Francis get exposed in one of those fights and, you know, can't box with those guys, then all that big money goes away. Because the big money is Francis is the destroyer. destroyer he's, you show he's, his highlight reel, the Alistair knockout. He didn't want to do yeah, the, the, the boxing thing. Yeah. yeah. Look, I get it from their perspective. But I don't know if that was the major sticking point. I don't, I'm not yeah. privy to the negotiations, but in my mind, like, that's the best heavyweight in the world. And yeah. you've got to, you know, when the guy beats Cyril Gaon handily with one knee, and then you see Cyril Gaon fighting in his next fight for the title, I want to see the Cyril Gaon fight. Look, Cyril Gaon versus Tai Tui Vasa was amazing. Cyril Gaon is a heavyweight. He moves different than any other heavyweight. Anybody. Light on his feet. He throws that weird front kick off that front leg. It's like a stepping. Man, yeah, it's, man, it's nasty, too. Mm -hmm. that's, a lead, that's from his lead leg. Yep. So it's like, 
Mm. He's standing he's sideways. Stabbing, he's stabbing you with it, And he too. twists with it when he th- throws yeah. it. Like, he's standing totally sideways. He's standing this way, and he's bouncing around, and he, like, twists and that's stabs Michael, you with Michael that front Jackson leg. Cake. <laughs> 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 you and your kidney. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he stabs dudes, and his movement and his agility at heavyweight is different than everybody else's. He moves Quitty. like a middleweight or a lightweight. I mean, or, or uh, like a light heavyweight. He's, he's much lighter on his feet. Than someone who's you know uh, in the heavyweight division mostly, it's different. Yeah, he's a problem. He's a problem, and uh, he's a big dude. Yeah, he's, he's a, a big, big dude. dude. So the 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 fact John won't be able to to just big bully boy him. him. Yeah, he won't right. be able to big boy him. Yeah, you know, and I'm inter- I'm interested to see that see that. And um, Gon has no problem chopping at John's legs. So yeah, we, I think I think we gonna, I think for a good portion, maybe even in the early part, we might see a kick leg a, a, a leg kicking match. Could be. Could be. I don't know if John yeah. wants to kick to kick with that guy though. No, nah, but that might be all he can get to for you know what I mean for Well, opening. Francis took him down repeatedly. That's where I go, hmm. Because if John Jones can wrestle you, like John's wrestles on another level. That's see, and that that's a there's a difference. And there's this is the difference where people made between Santos and, and the Glover with me, right? Is John Jones as strong as Francis is Francis and Gato? No. No. That's, you got to factor that in, you gotta bro. That you got to factor that in because yeah. Glover, one thing, Glover wasn't as strong as, as as Thiago Santos. Now, technically, skill for skill, I'd give the grappling to Glover, right? But Santos was strong as shit, so it took a different type of, like, like resistance and, like, de- defense to you know what I mean to fight to fight him to fight him off from his takedowns you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. I had to actually strain and be strong with him you mm-hmm. know so which took which took some, which took some energy took some things out of me that I wasn't expecting because I was expecting us to come out and bang right you know um so, uh Glover Glover was making technical moves so it's all right it's this step to the next step to the next step type deal. You know, that's not really, that's not going to strain you too, too much. Right. You know, it can, especially if you get behind, you know. Um, but for those, but that's different, though. Those are two right. different styles of grappling. So you, so that really don't work. Like, oh, he was able to do this, so he's going to be able to. I don't, Jones isn't, isn't as strong as Francis. No. So a lot of those positions that he was getting, where he was getting serial gone down, he was just, he just bullied him. like. Tossed right. him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't think John Jones can do that. Also, you got to think that Cyril Gaon going into that fight with Francis probably didn't expect grappling. Yeah. Cyril Gaon probably thought this was going to be a stand-up yeah, fight. I believe it. I, I yeah. did. I expected Francis to grapple a little more. Did you? I did. Just because Cyril Gaon moves too much. Mm. He moves too much. How is she going to get a hold of him and try to, you know what I mean, slow the fight down to your pace? Yeah. You got to grab him. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. That's one way of looking at it. But you know, Francis said that during the sparring exchanges that they had uh, when they were training together in the gym, he, he hurt Cyril. Tra- training isn't the same thing because you know you're not trying to be a dick to your partner. You're not trying to hurt your partner. You're just right. trying to get looks and things like that. Yeah. So like training is not the same thing. Well, luckily now, you know, it's interesting where we're at now because fighters are so much more scientific in the way they train. But mm-hmm. if you go back to the early days of MMA, ah, uh, yeah, that's how they did it. Dudes just fought. Yeah. They fought in the gym. They knocked each other out all the time. That's why Sean Strickland. Yeah, well, Sean Strickland, that guy fucking spars hard. Yeah, His... he keeps asking. <laughs> he keeps asking me if I want to if uh if I want to get some work in. I think we want to get some in. Yeah. yeah, he's an interesting cat. He's peculiar. Yeah, he's definitely peculiar. His style's so different too. It's a very I like, odd. I style. like the way he fights. I like watching him fight. He's funny as hell. Yeah, he's funny. I hate his boots. His boots? His fucking boots. What terrible. kind of boots is he wearing? I don't know. They look terrible. <laughs> All right. I've never seen his boots. Throw, throw your boots away, Sean. What's wrong with his boots? What are they like? Oh, bro, they just look like those things. Yeah, uh, bro, <laughs> they gotta go. Bro. Why is he wearing those boots in his fighter picture? That's so and weird. It's Vegas, bro. It's Vegas, bro. It's yeah. hot as shit. Why do you have boots? Yeah. For no reason should you live in Vegas and own a pair of boots. Yeah, are you are you working on a construction site? Like, why right. you have boots on like that? Are you hiking? He's he's <laughs> he's, uh, he's misappropriation uh, mis uh, misappropriating uh, construction workers. Yeah, his big victory Smart. over um, Imamov. Imamov that's, that was, was a big good. fight, was big good. fight, and you know gutted it out. 
short term. You know, like didn't have a lot of time to prepare for that fight. That was the one after New Year's, right? Mm -hmm. Was that before? I was in, it was before. To go short it was the last short fight of the year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, no. He fought the he headlined the the last and the last mm -hmm. one of last year and the first one of this year. Yeah. So that was so yeah. So that was the beginning. That was January. That's that was right. You're right. Yeah. That was the beginning. But he had just fought like two weeks before that. Like, Wasn't and you that let long me ago. fight a little heavier. Like, yeah. I, like I would I would agree. Most people could probably do that. That's true too, right? You know, mo already... well, most professional fighters, most top level fighters, you know, you if we, we're two weeks after you fought, you're not that bad off of shape. Even right. if you've been eating like shit, you're still, you know, what I mean, you're still sitting pretty good. Who was Imovov supposed to fight? Calvin Gaslam. Yes. Yes. And that's Calvin. a way different fight too, right? Because yes. Calvin's shorter. Yeah. You know what I mean? He leans a little forward. He's a little bit more boxer. He comes yeah. to you. He comes to you a little more. Whereas Sean fights really long and like mm -hmm. kind of awkward and gives you different like angles and. Calvin's one of those dudes. I had a conversation with Calvin away. once. I was like, Calvin, you could be a world champion at 170. You just got to get your shit together. Yeah. You just got to lose that weight. Cause like he's such a tank, yeah. you know. And at one seventy, like he would be lean and ripped, right. and and it has all has these advantages. The, the same size, and yeah. But those dudes are. That's the only thing about one eighty five. Those dudes are too tall. They're just too big. Yeah, they're too big. They're too big for him to. You when know. you see Pajera, I mean, <laughs> he's so big, and you know, Kelvin's my size. Like it doesn't make sense that he's fighting at one hundred eighty five. You see pounds. who? I don't. See, I don't. See, I don't see nobody, Joe. Oh, you don't see him? I don't see him, Joe. When you guys are staring at each other after oh, yeah, the fight, no. that was a weird moment, We right? weren't even staring at each other, literally. I walked up, Glover went over to shake my team's hand, and I walked up to shake his hand. The whole, like, thing that him getting mad about the, uh, like, the, uh, the whole, what are you, oh, you going to say about knocking, what about knocking me out? Dude, I said that shit months ago. And yeah, I said it. I said this shit. I believe this shit. You come up to 205, you sign a contract to fight me, I plan on knocking you the fuck out, period. You know, I don't, I don't get what the, he's like. He's like all like, well, maybe Hill should be the backup for me and me and Izzy fighting all that. Like, bro, if you want to fight me, like for real, for real, just come up, go ahead, get go, go ahead, vacate your belt, do whatever you gonna do, whatever you want to do, and make it happen, bro. Make it happen. I'm not, man. <laughs> I'm not ducking nobody, bro. I'm here for all the smoke. I want to fight everybody. I want those fights. You know, I don't think he gets past Izzy this time. You, you know what I mean? So? I think Izzy wins this one. Really? You know, just because, bro, he was winning. He was winning. He was he was winning in pretty good fashion. He was winning, and he last. had him hurt real bad at the yeah. end of that first round. Real yeah. bad. If that fight, if you got thirty seconds more in that fight, he Ten. might not make it out of that first round. Ten. Ten. If he if he if, he, if he if that uh, if he throws that hook that he was gonna throw, mm -hmm. and that lands, the fight's over. Yeah. Interesting rematch. Interesting. And that's April, right? That's Miami. That's a that's gonna be wild. If I, man, if I got any like my only my only only thing I only thing like I would I would do differently. Like I was and I'm not definitely hundred percent not telling them how to fight or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Um don't don't focus so much on the kicks. Just box his ass. Mm. Alex can't box. Mm. He can't box. Box his ass. And mm. you knock him out easy. You think so? Yeah. Really? Interesting. The problem is Alex is kicking. You know, he's always but chopping you can, those fucking legs. People kick, people are kicking me. People don't thought I could only box for all this time. Mm. So I, so I'm gonna be honest. You kicking it if if you if you stay on the right angles and you press the and you press that boxing range enough, kicking don't help you. That's going on one leg. If I'm in range to put to put these hands on you and you go up on one leg, you just did me a favor. Mm. Yeah, I'm saying a little too much, but I can say this, and I still, I'm still gonna whoop his ass if it ever happens. So, if they fight again, and Alex, even if Alex loses, if he loses, maybe that's a good reason for him to go up to light heavyweight. Mm -hmm. But also, if it's a close fight, he's gonna want a rubber Come match. On, rematch. He's gonna want a rubber match. I mean, he beat Izzy for the title in the fifth round, stopped him in the. But fifth do you round. get? But do you do that though? If he didn't defend the belt, like, what's up with all this, like? Like that'd be like if I lost, like if I if I fought my next fight and then like it was a close fight and I lost, do I get a rematch? Just because the fight was close, like whatever happened to it to like you know what I mean earning the rematch, like how establishing the reign, showing like I think rematch rematch uh, most champs that get instant rematches was because it's like all right this dude's the best in the world maybe he just had an off night. Well, like, I think it's because we want to see it again. 
because it was so close, we want to see, like, uh, me as a person who loves watching, like, really skillful guys go at it, I want to see who makes the adjustments and who does it. Like, like Max Holloway and Volkanovski. It's a perfect example. The first fight were real close. Volkanovski comes on and wins the second fight. Also pretty close. The third fight, no. But he fought. He fought zombie in between. Yes, them. true, true. You know, Good so point. it's like it's like so somebody else got they got a shot. Yeah. You know, he got a little a little t- a taste of a different flavor, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I don't know if I well, think shit. Well, the fact that Izzy <laughs> has completely wiped out the entire weight class might. He might yeah, oh man, shit, it might happen. It, it might happen. Well, now, now I think of it like that. It does make sense. It makes sense. Well, Robert Whitaker. Robert Whitaker in that last fight with Izzy, that was very close. Was close. Very close. Was and close. that's a great Good example fight. of a guy who got destroyed in the first fight and made all the adjustments. Made great adjustments. Beat Good. Cannoneer, who's fucking dangerous as shit. Dangerous as shit. And then went on and gave Izzy a really fucking tough fight. That was a really tough fight. I liked that fight a lot. I think um, Whitaker is a dangerous fight for um, Pajeda, too. I think he is, too. I very think, dangerous. I think Whitaker is actually a more dangerous fight. Than Izzy is because one because Rob actually does box a little more, and two um, the angles the angles and the angles and the movement and the mix and the mix and the, the way he mixes in the grapple he almost fights like a karate style light yeah, on his it's feet like a, it's like a like a, almost like a yeah. like a bobbing in and out and mm-hmm. bop 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 the minute it faints and the minute you buy something he oh he sell you yeah he sell you he, he give you what you pay for mm-hmm. he give you what you pay for and he blitzes you mm-hmm. and I think he's in a he different level he blitzes you at now. an angle mm-hmm. he blitzes you off at an angle so it's pretty. This is not taking anything away from Izzy, but I feel like Robert was in a funk then. I feel like he wasn't fighting to the best of his abilities, and he just fought right into to Izzy's hands in that fight. And also, that's Izzy putting it on him. I think Izzy's presence kind of mm. put kind of yeah. stun, kind of stuns, shocks people. And like you know, what I mean, he is a he, I, Izzy may look like on TV he may look skinny, but in person, Izzy's a pretty big dude. He's tall. He's and tall. He's hard. And, and he's, he's accurate as fuck. You know what I'm saying he's yeah. he's solid. Like people like skinny. Skinny don't mean shit if it's just straight dense muscle. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? So like he's he's got he's got some he's got some size to him. So he does have like some like oh okay cuz Rob is like what? 6'1? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Mhm. Is he's my size? Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a big tall dude. You know, I thought it was interesting when he fought Jan Bohovic, he decided to not even gain any weight. Just decided to fight yeah. like he weighed like 194. I think that was a mistake. I think that was a big that was a mistake. But honestly, Jan started catching his timing with some of the, like the um with the stand up too. Like he started cutting that little that, I think it was like a jab, like a little little, little quick little pop, like a little mm-hmm. pop in jab. He was, he started landing that to disrupt his timing and disrupt whenever Izzy was coming forward. So he had some success with that. But um Yeah, man. Uh Izzy Definitely should have gained some weight for that fight, cause then at the end, whenever you started to get tired, and now the main thing that you had was was speed, cause I believe Izzy was landing a hook, lead hook, lead lead left hook, was lead left hook or switch right hook, one of those one of those sides. He was landing that on Blahovich, and he was landing it. Uh, he was landing it pretty solid. And then Blahovich just went to the wrestling. And when Blahovich took him down, you see the size. Yeah, he was, he was so much bigger. Yeah, <clears throat> but you see he, the size difference with Pajeda too. Pajeda's way bigger. He's skinny though. He's thinner. He's he's he he's is pretty muscular. He's he's muscular, but he's like he's taller, but he's like he's like he's thinner. Like for two oh for for one eighty five, yeah, he's he's like that. But you put him at two oh five, he's not he's not like that. You I think he's definitely the same height as Johnny Walker. Is he built like Johnny Walker? No. 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 You know what I mean? Even when he's out of camp and he's like, Oh, he walks around two twenty, he still he still he still looks relatively thin. In comparison to Johnny Walker, yeah, Johnny Walker's a real outlier in that light heavyweight division. Well, shit, I, 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 he's still thin as a pan, as opposing parents to anybody else in the two hundred five division. Pajeda is, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Interesting if he does that, if he gains more weight, like what he what does he decide to do? I mean, I don't know. I mean, he he was talking about fighting Hamzat. You remember he said, "I'll fight you at light heavyweight." Because Hamzat was like, you know, let's fight in Brazil. But he's like, look, I can't make the weight on short notice mm-hmm. like that. Which is interesting. Like, how much time does he need to make that weight? He's cutting a lot of weight. How much time has it been on average in between his fights? <clears throat> he's had some time. But, I mean, you know, uh, I don't know, like, how big he got after the Izzy fight. He might have just, like, ate like a pig and just realized, like, hey, it's going to take me a few weeks just to get this weight off. 
I'm not sure, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a fascinating rematch. And, uh, you know, Izzy's just so intelligent and he's so clever. And that he doesn't, I mean, he's not taking this fight unless he thinks he could beat him again. And he's got he's going to try to figure out some way. I think he does. Um, honestly, if I think Izzy, if Izzy kind of like a little bit more of a Volk approach, just all right. I'm gonna be faster. Let you let you let you open up first, and then make you pay for whatever you do, mm -hmm. and then just kind of shut down anything that he wants to do, like from the beginning, and like and play it from that type of way. While mix it in, maybe like maybe like the threat of like a takedown, the threat of like a tie up, and things like that. That's different. Yeah. Well, he definitely won the grappling exchanges. Yeah. And he had him in bad trouble when he had his back and he was yeah. beating him up. And, you know, that was unexpected. Interesting to see Izzy become a grappler, too. You yeah. know? That's why, I've, that's another thing. Like, everybody thinks, like, like oh, Pieta is, uh, Pieta will be, bro, like, bro, he can't grapple with me. He can't. <laughs> Anybody thinks that I can't wrestle. Remember when y'all thought I couldn't grapple or couldn't get up from bottom? Like, it's like, bro, I, I'm excited, bro. I'm really excited. There's so many good fights people. for you, man. Yeah, I'm excited just to just. Was this camp uh, preparing for the title? I know that you had brought in a nutritionist mm -hmm. to, to to work with you. Is yeah. that the first time you had done that? Yeah. Yeah? What was that yeah. like? No, it was great, bro. It was uh, it was a game changer. Yeah? He was a. Um, he he's a nutritionist and a What's personal his name? chef. Ian Ian Lar uh La I'll be forgetting how to pronounce his last name. Uh Jamie will find it. Larios. I think it's Larios. Ian Larios. Um he 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 comes in, he he stays stayed at my house. He um he cooks all my food, he makes everything for me. I don't have to like all I gotta do is just eat what he tells me. He puts it in front of me. Like, yo, eat this. And it's good food. Like, it's legitimately like some, like, I got, like, pictures and stuff of it. Of the Larios. Stuff he's making. Ian Larios. Yeah, bro. Chef to the world's top fighters. And so, uh, like, what was different in the way he was having you eat versus the way uh, you you were eating previously? Uh, I just, I wasn't eating enough, you know? Oh, yeah. uh, I, uh, in order to eat at a calorie deficit for me, to me, you just, you just ate less. You ate the right things, and then I just ate... I knew how to portion my things, you know. So like, I was I, certain things that I eat, I knew what to eat, and I knew how to get my way to where I wanted. And that's what I was doing. And granted, throughout the camp, I felt weak as shit, you know, just because I wasn't giving myself enough carbs, enough energy. Sometimes on certain for certain weeks, I just do a keto diet, and I wouldn't even eat carbs, you know. Um, he came in, was like, "No, you need carbs. This is what you're gonna do." And I never felt weak once during the camp. Really? I felt tired. I felt beat up a little bit, you know, a little wear and tear from from going from doing two a days for a whole week. But I never felt drained. I never felt weak. Mm. And that was a game changer. That was a game changer. And what was the difference in terms of the types of foods that he was having you eat? He, you said he added carbs, but like, what what were you eating? Exactly? I was, bro. I was eating everything. I was eating steak. He made. I think he made chicken wings once. Um, he made like some. It's like he just made like he he made <laughs> a bunch of different things like like some Peru like made like a proven ditch homemade like tater tots, you know just different things. But the way he makes them and like the sauces he puts on them is like it's almost like you eating at a restaurant. Mm. It's almost like you eating at a five star restaurant every meal. There it is. Look at that. Yeah, Damn, he just puts a little drizzle on the plate and everything. <laughs> oh yeah, bro. That, and that's how he, that's how he played it. That's how he was plating it to me like, nice. like every time. So it's exciting. So you're looking forward to it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If I could, if I could have got him to come and stay with me now, he'd still be with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like I'd rather eat the food. Like it's, it's, it's like that. It's just like, but it's all good. Mm. It's like the, some of the best food I've ever eaten. You know, and um, I was full. You know, I ate took and I ate. It was just it, bro. It so he's taking into consideration the amount of calories that you're burning, mm -hmm. what the amount of calories you're going to get from each individual meal, the Sodium, protein competition. Yeah. Everything. Everything. And he makes everything from everything from scratch. So he gets everything fresh. Everything is organic. He makes all the sauces himself. He makes all the uh, everything. So you think you'll be using him for Every future time. camps I won't, too? I'll never, I'll never do a camp without him. Wow! I'll never do another camp without him. That's interesting. Yeah. What a big change. Yeah, and I'll bring, I'm bring him out even earlier next camp. 
Wow. How many weeks was he with you for this? Um, he was with me just under four weeks. So when you think about um, different things that you have added over the years, um, what about strength and conditioning? Like how much yeah. how much do you do with that, and how much of it is like fight, sp- honestly, fight specific training? Honestly, this is the last camp I didn't do any strength and conditioning. Really, really? Uh, outside of maybe doing the skier and then like hitting doing like the bike just to like warm up and get, get <laughs> for my first few rounds to get a sweat going. Um, I do a lot of fight specific things. Like I do a lot of rolling, a lot of drilling, uh, a lot of sparring. Really? Yeah. No strength and conditioning. I didn't do anything. You conditioning had for great time. fucking cardio. Yeah. <laughs> well, crazy. I, well, I still work. I mean, yeah. my strength, oh, no, and, no. my strength and conditioning was me going hard rounds, fresh body. Right. So like, so like one of the things we'll do is this, right? So I, uh, my my job was to defend takedowns and be able to f- defend. A relentless takedown uh, attack. So what we'll do, we'll put it. We'll do minute round, minute, uh, minute intervals. So my uh, my uh, my 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 grappling coach and main strong uh, training partner Justin Andrews. He'll come in. He'll start in. We'll start it. We'll start on start it in on a single leg. All right. After defend the single leg, defend the takedown, defend the takedown. He's gonna go as hard as he can for a minute. Once that minute is up, we got a fresh body coming in. Once that man's up, fresh body coming in, fresh body. So I'll have about like five like, like five or six dudes lined up, and we just fresh body every minute, mm. you know? So that's how we do We go We go like that, and I'll do, we'll do that for maybe like an hour. And then um, I go over to striking, and I'll go and I'll strike for like an hour. In the same session? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, then I'll, I'll leave, go home, uh, recover, or go to PT or whatever, get my, get my recovery in eat probably take a catch a nap for a second i go back and i do it again same thing same thing work my grappling not the exact same thing but working grappling working different parts of grappling drilling things like that fresh body and then rolling sparring fresh body even sparring so even when i'm sparring well we'll go we'll go so how uh depending on how many guys i got you know one of them you go a minute you'll go like a minute and a half then fresh body Minute and a half, minute, minute and a half, fresh body. Minute, minute and a half, fresh body. So it's always somebody else fresh, so they can always be on point. And then I just, you know, I gotta work my, I gotta adjust. It's interesting the the different approaches when it comes to like how much time should you be spending on doing strength and conditioning work versus mm-hmm. fight specific work. And some people like yourself that just get all of their conditioning done through fight specific work, because yeah. that's what George St. Pierre turned to later in his career. Like, George, early on in his career, he was doing a lot of strength and conditioning training, and then somewhere along the line, he realized that efficiency was most important mm-hmm. and that you get that from training. Yeah. And you, you get that fight-specific cardio from doing the grappling rounds, doing the, the you know, the sparring rounds, 100%. doing the rounds in the bag. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, even like, and then everything, every like, we, we, I always put myself at a disadvantage. So, like, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get through that. We'll get through that session. Now the next session is... I gotta let, I gotta start from the bottom, and sometimes it'll be sitting up back up against the back up against the wall, and they got your legs. Mm. You gotta go from there. You know, like I already got your legs completely pinned, so now you so now I have to get up from there. And in the next minute, another fresh guy is coming to get on my legs to restart me in the same split, the same way. You know, and that's and that's how we do. We work mm. there. We work. We work. We work all positions. Work all facets of where we want to be proficient at. And, do it to you, so you got to you got to be able to do it when y'all both full strength. The full guy coming, and when you get tired and he's still got more more than you, he's fresh. You know, you still got to be able to do it. Now, what about in between camps? Do you do any like weightlifting, kettlebells, any yoga, anything in between camps to just like sort of strengthen areas and you know prevent injuries or any, anything mm. along those lines? I haven't been. That's something that I uh, that uh, we are going to. Going to add, I had I had a strength and conditioning coach, actually for the Jimmy Crew and the Johnny Walker fight. You know, um, just kind of gotten away from it because like the last year, I've really been dealing with like a lot of injuries. Like my body's been beat up more the last year than it's ever been. Like what kind of injuries? Man, all type of things, bro. Like elbows, shoulders, knees, ankles, like. It was really like this Tiago Santos fight too. Like I didn't really do any strength and condition. I didn't do. I did pretty much no strength and condition, and then minimal, even really like hard, like 
grab like hard smart hard anything for uh for the santos fight just because bro i was so i was so beat up my body was so beat up that i just had to make sure i can get to the fight and feel good and just even i mean feel healthy in the fight so that was the main focus for that one so and it showed a little bit, you know. I did get a, I got a little tired in the fight, you know, and things like that. But you know, I still had enough how what I needed to finish the fight late in the fourth round. So that just let me. That was also a thing that just let me know, like, all right, bro, you got it. So just make sure you put in the work, put in, and then you really got it. Yeah, even you know? under less than ideal circumstances, mm-hmm. you know, with injuries and dealing with stuff, you could still win against a top guy. Yeah, yeah. That was the whole laying back. I belong. Mm, yeah. yeah so that was a big moment for you yeah you know i was i i i, <clears throat> I don't i don't complain and i don't i don't make excuses or nothing like that so like most of the stuff i deal with i just don't say anything you know i just i just deal with it because i really truly got the mentality of feeling who cares mm. you know what i'm saying so you need that yeah that's a yeah. giant advantage because guys who fret over every little thing that's going wrong and it starts spiraling they go in a downward spiral in their head like oh i'm injured i can't i wish i was not injured i wish I, you know, if you can just deal and just keep and just get to the fight that's a giant advantage yeah man that was that was the main that was just the main thing i i do it's just what do you push do? through? What are you doing for recovery? Do you get massages? Do you do yeah. cold plunge? Do you uh, do saunas? Yeah, I get massages. Like uh, this last, like this last time with Glover, I felt good. Everything went went good. I had a, um, I have a teammate. Uh, she she's gone to school. She's a she's a uh, licensed massage therapist. Like uh, does health massage, uh, sports massage, and things like that. So she would come in. She came in in the mornings and she was massaging me before uh, before training. And then I, after that, I'd leave there and I'd go to physical therapy. I'd be there for a couple hours and, yeah, then uh, ice what baths. Do you, what do you go to physical like therapy for? Hmm? What do you go to physical therapy for? Injuries. Just a little weird injuries. stuff. You got yeah, all, the, the, all the shit you're dealing with. Yeah. So you're just dealing with it while you're in the middle of camp, mm-hmm. which is less than ideal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're doing cold plunges and saunas? I do the cold plunge whenever I go out to Vegas. but um, That's it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got a, We have a uh, was it the cryo cryo yeah, cryotherapy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those I, are I great. Go, I'm going. I go to the cryo there. I do ice baths here and there. Mm. But like honestly, for the most part, bro, it's fucking winter in Michigan. All you got to do is just go outside. And That's true. Cold plunge. Yeah, get in your pool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> put a bucket of water outside and just go sit in that. You ain't got to put a bucket of water out there. Just go out. Just go step out there. Yeah. Just go step out there. Right in your underwear. <laughs> Man, not even you could be fully dressed. Yeah. Go ahead, just step out there. You gonna knock some inflammation out. That's true, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> for true. Real. That's true. I mean, if just you could stand still in thirty minutes, like outside with thirty degrees out in your underwear. Just stand still, you'd knock it all out. Man, listen, this dude's in Michigan. I mean, I live in Grand Rapids, bro. So you could be literally a blizzard. You walk and just see a dude walking on in a t-shirt and some shorts. They're so used to it. Yeah, that's over too here, used to it, fam. Yeah. <laughs> that's too used. Over here, dude, they had a, a rain. It was like thirty-three degrees. And it shut the whole fucking city down. It was like, what do we do? It's 33 <laughs> degrees freezing rain. It's, freezing rain is very, very dangerous it's out. It's hilarious. <laughs> I was like, dude, I grew up in Boston. This is this ain't <laughs> right. shit. It's nothing. This is normal. You go to work. You ever came outside and not be able to find your car? It's covered in snow. snow. <laughs> you don't know which one's your car. You have to right. like, cl- go the side panel. Nope, this one's blue. This, this one's, one's white. Nope. Where's my red car? Right. <laughs> and you gotta get all right. This one's red. You gotta go yeah. to the back. A Toyota. A yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toyota. And then you gotta scrape the windshield. Like there's a lot. It's terrible. Man. It's so shoveling yourself. But it makes resilient people. People you know. that grow up in cold climates, they are much more resilient people. People that live in California, they don't know shit about weather. You gotta endure, man. It's yeah. about endurance, yeah. man. You gotta be you gotta be able to endure. Then we uh we moved close enough to the school to where it was a walk, but wasn't no bus coming to get you. Oh, uh, how many? You blocks? ever woke up late? You ever woke up late for school? And it's snowing outside, bro. Yeah, you got to hurry up, rush, yeah. and before you even get out, you 
walk outside. They got to try to turn against the wind. <laughs> <laughs> trying to turn, trying to hide from the wind. People in warm weather, they don't know about they that wind. Know. Those Hawaii people, they have no idea about that wind. They t- rain. <laughs> Rain. <laughs> yes, rain, motherfucker. You just walk your ass on and get wet a little bit. Fuck, Ray. What about three feet of snow in front of your door where you can't open your door to get outside? I had to, I had to, um, I think I posted it on my, on my TikTok video of it snowed. It snowed, bro. I opened my garage, dude. It's like three feet of snow there. So now I just got to. Get out there! So it's like, oh, like, hell no, hell no. <laughs> the serious workout yeah, snow bro. shovel. It was. It was. The shit was heavy, especially when it gets wet. That wet yeah. snow. Ugh. You get stick. Ugh. Like, that's why you got to get out and get it while it's coming down, so it don't stick. Yeah. Because once it sticks, that's now you out there sh- sh- for your sh- cold plunge. Sh- just fucking lay down that snow. That'll reduce the shit out of That'll some information. That'll reduce the shit out of some information. The only thing is, though, even when you go inside, it still don't stop, and it hurts a little bit. Yeah, it does. Are you, uh, do you take supplements? Are you taking vitamins and minerals? And Here's yeah, you. Look at this. <laughs> that's some serious. Bro. That's work, too, though. That's, that's a good work. workout. I was on my way to training. Mm. I was on my way to the gym. To go mm. do a, uh, to go do a uh, two-hour uh, grappling and striking workout. <sighs> Hard work. It's I, I really firmly believe it makes better people. I think people that grow up in cold climates, they just they just can deal with more shit. They're just used to it. Yeah, man. It's just... I ain't going to say that. What are you going to say? <laughs> One day you're going to get out of there? When you got a lot of money, man, when you start stacking up some big victories and you go, why the fuck am I freezing? Why am I cold? Like, (laughs) why am I cold? Like, I, like, I've been gone. I think I left, I've been gone for like, I think maybe like a week now. I haven't been home for like a week. It's too cold, bro. Too cold. (laughs) I've been in Vegas. I've been in AZ. I'm here. So nice. Hang around a little bit here for a little while longer. Birds are chirping. You know, sunny weather. I, I heard a bird. <laughs> I heard a bird. It was outside. My home. It was like beep, beep. I was like I was like what is that? I was like I was like is that an alarm clock? I got to check in my phone. I was like oh, oh it's a bird, real bird. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> go outside. Go outside already for the and it's warm. I wore a t shirt when I got here, Joe. Yeah. I wore a t shirt out the airport when I got here. Yeah, it was it's like beautiful. seventy degrees out. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Do you think that you you have an advantage though, in, like suffering and being in cold weather like that? I think it makes me a little. I'm I'm more used to dealing with adversity. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Especially in a physical context, because you know you got to think. We play. I played football, so you know you play football out in that mm-hmm. in the yeah. cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that's that's different. Yeah, when you watch a football game, it's just like a blizzard out. Like, well, that is a wild sport. It makes me mad now. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't. I just. I, I get. I get really judgmental, Joe. Yeah. I get real just. Imagine. Then, then when they don't have any sleeves on, you think you're better than the rest of us. <laughs> you think you're better. Oh, you got thicker skin. Okay. Okay. I wonder how they do that. Like, dude, it's like literally coming out blizzard. They stand out there. Whoo, look like they smoke a twelve packs of cigarettes. Out, no uh, sleeves. You no know, sleeves. Yeah. No sleeves. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. This is Wisconsin people. What do you have to prove? Yeah, look at that. What do you have to prove? No shirts. What do you, no Hand shirts. Warmers. Hand, Hand warmers. Hand warmers. Gloves. Why don't they have shirts on? Like, what is the purpose of that? Shit, I don't know how fucking badass they Just are. Just to let everybody know uh-huh. how jacked they are? They're ready to go. Ready to go. I'm not going to lie. Your muscles do do look with you. You ever notice that whenever you get out of a cryo chamber? Yeah, like how? Jacked. Yeah, bro. Yeah. You're, if you actually feel, your muscles feel harder. Yeah, but your whole body is like. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Killmonger and shit with all the bumps on your body. <laughs> Are you taking, do you take supplements? you take vitamins you, yeah. on top of all that? Yeah, yeah. I take some Do you have someone who somewhere. like monitors that for you and sets your schedule and what to take and what, you know, when to take it? Stuff nah, like I kind of do it myself, but no, yeah. when, while Ian was there, he, you know, he, he kind of stays on that like, as well. What kind of stuff are you taking? Like multivitamins? Yeah, multivitamins, fish oil, krill oil, turmeric. Um, I got some aminos. Um. Uh, 
Yeah, pretty much. Have that. you ever thought about doing a camp at um, the Performance Institute? I have. I have. Because they have well, so many like, resources that are available. It's a beautiful yeah. thing to have that thing for the UFC where the UFC PI has this amazing setup with all these experts and great nutrition and all this equipment and great great facilities to train at. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I went in and got the I went and got the test, you know, where they test out your body, how mm -hmm. far your neck turns, how far you yeah. can look this way, how far you can bend this way, can you touch your toes, can you yeah. toe touch you, you know, just all those things. So I've been to uh I've been and got, I've I've gotten those and then at the end of that they give you like an assessment like, Hey, your body has this is here, you can lift here, do this exercise. Yeah, so they really I know I know how helpful and how deep they get down into everything. So Yeah, it's about yeah. as scientific as you can get. And the yeah. fact that it's available to all fighters that they could just train there anytime they want that's giant yeah for sure i think that's 100%. huge so you've thought about just, it i've thought about it it's just the being out there you know i got six kids bro so you oh, know, it's okay. like being yeah. being all the way out there I'm no not, you can't do that about my kids and yeah things. yeah that's a bummer man when i know a lot of some guys they they go away and they do these mountain camps like they go to big bear or something like that and they train for months away from their family i'm like I know that you don't want a distraction, but how much does that take away from you as a person? Like, how do you feel when you're up there? Like, how much do you miss your like, family? Yeah, I mean, I, I think while you're busy, you're like, you're not really distracted, all right? But then whenever you stop doing stuff and then, like, it be something small, like somebody else sees their kid or you see a kid or you see something like, oh, my kid might like that or yeah. something like that. And he's like, damn. Yeah. And you just start missing them. Yeah. Yeah. The life of a fighter. It's not yeah. not an easy road, my friend, but you're on one of the yeah, best man. paths that you can get. World motherfucking champion, Jamal man. Hill. No matter not, what happens, they can't take that from you. Man, not Joe, not the, not the town, not the city, not the county, not the state, not the country, not the continent, but the world. The whole planet. The whole planet. The whole planet. And if you're the UFC champion, you're the real champion. Yeah. There's a lot of champions best out there. Best in the world. That's the best in the world. Jamal Hill, you fucking man. That's <laughs> crazy. Well, listen, man, thank you very much for being here. I'm a fan, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing your title defenses and, and seeing you continue to chase excellence. It's well, beautiful. It's beautiful to watch. Thank you having me, man. My thank pleasure. You. Been trying to get on here. Been trying to get in here with you for a minute, Joe. <laughs> We're here. And I thought, I thought the first time we was gonna be in the same room, I thought it would have been on Fear Factor. You know, uh. <laughs> back, back, cause back whenever you were you a kid, you broke in the hood, you watching Fear Factor, you like, hmm, he, he that bug really ain't that bad. I can use, I can use, I can use fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, I can use fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> well, this is even sweeter. To do it this oh, way. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. All right, bye, everybody.